Hello, everyone, and welcome to what is unquestionably going to be one of the strangest Ashes Wednesdays of our uh, series. It seems like forever ago now, but I believe it was August uh, was when we announced that we were doing a throwback to the Ashes, that we were going to be bringing this back, partnering with Plaid Hats uh, through the PDP system on our website. And we are now in March, uh, almost, uh, I guess, what, September, October, November, September. Seven months. We're over half a year from that point. We're on the, the eve of the release of the upgrade kit, which I know everyone is like super excited about. Uh, all the boat and customs issues. Your hands okay? Wait, well, yeah, did you ever do the thing where you, you counted the months and the March, knuckle right? was 31 or something? So I remember being told about it January and then totally March. not caring. 30 days, half September, April, From June, and November. November. All the rest have 31, except for February. Maybe that doesn't rhyme really, but. I don't know. I don't shirts know. Shirts on the fire today. That. You're wearing one of those shirts. I refuse to be. It, it actually, when I'm just looking at it, it kind of does that to my my eyes. Let alone the cameras. I refuse to let my fashion sense be dictated Look by this that, stupid man. camera. I told you it was going to be a weird, weird Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, and I've here got we are. ideas. And you've so, got an Echo deck to build. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I, I think what's happening. It, it happens with all the decks. My is is chat happening at all? I'm getting none of it. Are you guys uh, talking? Can you guys uh, chat and let us know that you exist and that we look and sound just fine? Um, Only let me know if I look and sound really good. Well, your shirt is otherwise totally tubular, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that in forever. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Uh, it's let's also find possible, out. Possible because I'm over on the Discord now, seeing the chat. That no one's just no one's watching. Oh, here we go. Yeah, everybody's here. They're saying all sorts of stuff. You get it now. There it goes. Yeah, all there right, start. You guys were like hiding. Normally, there's some pre-chat. Was there no pre-chat going on? I don't know. Wow. And according to this, there wasn't. Wow. But, uh, you know, I mean, we have that nice brick of time before we're actually live where people are just used to, It's like, put it on and I'll come back to it when it's live. Hey, Kronos804, since we got a stream of uh, chats, German diehard fan of Ashes here. Well, thank you. Uh, glad to have you in the chat here. Any word on delivery? It seems like U.S. players already have the cards. So that's actually the opposite. Uh, I Definitely think, not true. I think yeah. it's Australia that has the cards, um, like the Reborn products came out, and that's a totally different distribution network. I know the problem, the delay is coming because it's getting the product from, you know, the manufacturing to the states has been an issue. Um, so that's supposed, I mean, it could resolve at any point. Uh, we're really excited to finally be able to get that out because we've been playing with the Reborn actual cards for a couple months and then the proxies before that. Yeah. Um, and I'm super excited. I know on the, our Discord channel, Everyone is just like, cannot wait to finally get these cards in their hands. So yeah, I it's can. close. It's super close. I'm ready for everybody to see it. Uh, yes, my shirt is, uh, you know, is striping out. I should probably just never wear this one again. But I like it. Wear it on Fridays. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It's a good or, solution. Or, you know, any other day. You know, but I just want to share my personality with everybody. Um, so th this is going to be, I feel like what's <laughs> happening with Ashes. We've been playing for like seven months, right? Every week. Yes. We played with the old cards, and then as stuff got previewed, we were trying the new stuff as it was happening. Then we got the Reborn kit early uh, to take a look at that. We've been playing a lot, and I feel like uh, it reminds me, it, it kind of step-by-step going the same process with Flesh and Blood, where I'm getting to, to deeper layers of the game. Mm -hmm. But obviously, each of those games is very different. So mm -hmm. the, what you're discovering as you are learning more, I feel like I, the past month or two has been big for me. But the thing I'm feeling like is like, Really, I, I did a deck building session after one of our streams a couple, like three or four weeks ago. And it was the first time that the card pool, as big as it is, right? Mm -hmm. Three or four years of content that has come out since we really were engaged in it. Tons of cards, right? That are just already in existence. It started to feel smaller. Mm -hmm. And the reason it did is because I started recognizing like, uh, when I was solo stream, people really wanted me to build Echo, but I ended up playing against Rodney instead a week or two ago. And... So I've been looking at building a deck for Echo, but realistically, when you pick your your magic types that you're going to be using, um, which, uh, you know, at first I was getting fancy, trying to run like three or four colors of magic. Uh, I've since mostly done five and five. Less fancy? Keep, keep it streamlined, consistent, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it also makes deck building a lot easier, but the recognition, like Echo default, his uh, signature card is... Uh, Chaos gravity, gravity. Chaos Gravity, yeah. So... He can spend an angel or a music note, which is divine, and uh, I don't know the blue one. What's the music note die called? Sympathy. Sympathy. Yeah. And a basic. So technically, he could play either of these class types, and that's if he wants to play a signature card, which is crazy. Why wouldn't you? 
But he's he, supposed to be one of the best in the game. But he? he doesn't have to play both. He can. That's true. His deck came built playing both. Um, but I, I just was exploring this card pool particularly just to see what these magic types could combine. It's a cool right? card pool. It's good colors, too. But when you go through the card pool and just pull out cards that can be played by these two and these two combined, it's not that many cards. Yeah. And that's what I mean by it feels a little smaller. Yeah. So I feel like I'm starting to grasp. And then when you're looking at that selection of cards, you can start to understand what your strategic options are. Yeah. Um, so that's that's where most of my learning is coming do from. Do you start to see how the different schools have cards that do certain kinds of things? And most of them, so most of them are going to do damage in a certain way. <laughs> Some of them are going to draw cards in a certain way, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, your, your um, ceremonial magic, it's going to do damage by, like, sacrificing stuff and, like, you taking damage and any of blood chains and all that. Uh, and then, like, your illusion is going to be, like, obviously confusing things, like cover, I think, is an illusion uh, card. I could be completely wrong about that. I'm sorry. Uh, but the idea is, like, hey, you thought you had me, and now you don't. So illusion's kind of doing that thing. Um, Charm seems to be about, like, buffing things up, because you, if you look at kind of where Mayoni and those kinds of cards came from, it's like Charm die are going to allow us to, like, make things, uh, either protect things or make things attack well, it seems like. Like, you you did a lot with the Charm uh, pool, and it was a lot of, like, removing exhaustion from the Silver Snake. Mm -hmm. And, like, uh, wasn't there, like, a buff, like, some attack buffies where you can make them unblockable? So, Those kinds of things. Yeah, like Hypnotize um, is a card that lets you kind of sneak through. And, I, like, one of the big thing about Charm in Reborn, at least, is basically restricting or reducing your opponent's units, right? So, like, and not by, like, destroying them. That's yeah. nature. Nature does damage, yeah. it's right? It's like a manipulation. It, yeah, yeah, it's manipulation. So Hypnotize means you can't block with them. The yeah. die itself, the power symbol, makes your opponent's units less powerful. Yeah. So less of a threat to you. Um, so, uh, whereas, like, Divine... Soft control. Yeah, Divine is kind of the opposite side of that equation, which is they have really powerful allies, they have really powerful conjurations, and they protect those, and yeah. they strengthen those, right? And they reinforce their board. So, but yeah, each each magic school has its own thing. But realistically, too, like, again, if you pick any two types, you reduce the card pool down uh, so significantly that there are actually only so many options. But you start learning, too, like, what options are in each color, and like I said, with uh, Echo, if you want to play a signature card, you're only bound to one magic type. Yeah. So technically, he could it's be wide open. either of these paired with any other color. And each pairing is going to bring certain things to the table. And obviously, like you want to start looking for things that work with his ability and his spell board and his battlefield size. Um, but yeah, but, it... Also, so many of the Phoenix born, their abilities are just strictly good, like generically good, right? Like placing exhaustion on things or drawing cards or manipulating dice. So the, they've done a great job in that the Phoenix born don't really pigeonhole themselves as much as uh, like a lot of the like corporations and Netrunner did. Yeah. Where or it's even, like you even, have to res ads to get this benefit. It's like, well, I have to yeah, run these that's cards. Very specific. This. Yeah. yeah, but even in like flesh and blood, each character has a very specific identity. Right, and mm -hmm. it, the classes also have an identity, um, and you can't mix and match as much, right? Like the deck yeah. in there is way less open. It's true in terms of how the card pool plays uh, within itself. That's what blew my mind about this. When we first played, I always felt like, and I, we, you know, when you play with a core core game, there's six Phoenix Born, so there's not so many options that each of them wants to even play. But it is so much less restrictive than I thought it was. Yeah, the first time around. Yeah, it feels cool. Uh, meanwhile, you're on a totally okay. Here's let, let's have some real talk here. Um, not about the shirt this time, but uh, maybe we'll talk about that more later. Here, here's my, by the way, my shirt plays with the camera just perfect. I know you really. It's a more professional. It's a more professional shirt. Uh, it just you know, as I don't far know, you, as you got a collar, who you are as a person, it doesn't really say a lot. Well, in a lot of ways, it does, doesn't it? But, you know, people who only wear black shirts are probably in about two to three categories of people that you've met in your life. One of them is going to Rocklahoma out here uh, to go see some old cover bands of, like, Led Zeppelin. And that's not Zach. <laughs> you don't think I'd go see that's old not, Led? That's not Zach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other one, you know, I was skateboarding with in high school. And then you have, uh, you know, the kind of the uh, Steve Jobs school of black shirts. So... You know, t pick and choose, but you are definitely in a, a smaller category once you decide to go that direction. Now, my my whole theory here is that I have changed my opinion on Conjurations and Allies completely after some discussion in our Discord uh, in the Ashes channel where you might expect it to happen, uh, where some deck lists were posted from some 
you know, top tier players. Some of those high pollutant players. Players have been playing since, you know, 2015 and beyond. Mm -hmm. Maybe never stopped playing. <laughs> Some say. And uh, <laughs> they still play to this day. They're, the whole spellboard thing is, is not even, uh, it's not even <laughs> that big of a deal. Nathan, by the way, saying, give us that kimchi. <laughs> I referenced <laughs> right. in yesterday's stream. Give me the eighth layer. We're going to layer all the inside jokes into the yeah. stream over the next few years, I assure you. Um, so what is a conjuration ultimately, right? So a conjuration versus an ally, it, it's a turn slower, because usually you play the spell, then play the conjuration, which can be good, because sometimes you want to wait your opponent out and see what they're committing to the board before you do something. So conjuration is, is in that way sometimes good, sometimes bad. Because like on the first turn, my first action is dropping an ally. If all I have is conjurations in hand, I can't block whatever damage you're going to put through. Yeah, which I did last week. Which you did. I would just drop that holy knight, and then it's like, you can't exhaust it with a spell from hand because of its ability. It's the, it is the scout of yeah, this it's game, like, is it, it not? It, it is, it really is. And if you don't have a, an ally in your hand, you, you can't do anything. You can't do anything about yeah. it. And so if you think about well, how, what makes them different, the conjurations are a card advantage... Uh, generator after the first cast. Yeah. Right? So like an ally, you have to draw it, and then you have to put it... Now, there's an exception to that, of course, with ceremonial dice. Yeah. So if you imagine every ally in the game costs an additional die to play, and they cost you one life, then they're the same thing as a conjuration. If you're running you a ceremonial. Grab them into hand and put them into play. Yeah. Ceremonial class right now, you got to get the class die. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit more uh, troubling, but they're not necessarily less permanent threats than conjurations are if they have a couple ceremonial dice yeah. you know what i mean so then you start looking at the pool and you're like well by the way that is maybe one of that class's chief it, things it's everything yeah they, they I, are light on conjurations i mean if i'm running any amount of allies i don't know how i don't run one ceremonial die the ability to always I, get a card yeah. that i need from my discard pile I, and play i mean i think there's a there's a use case for that i right? mean it's great so so why then Riddle me this. Why am I spending so much time mm -hmm. on my first five building out a, a spell board whenever you could just play three to four allies and basically do enough damage to kill a number of Phoenix Born? I'll give you two reasons. Okay. It's not always the case, though. But the two reasons you should be doing that mm -hmm. is if you expect the game to last long enough. It has to last at least probably three turns. Where the card advantage is going to matter. Yeah. Secondly, there's actually more reasons than these two. I'm gonna just keep. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna start talking, and I don't know where I'm going. I'm just gonna come get on there. in. You also, uh, if you have more recurring conjurations in play, the your deck itself can actually have less allies in it. True. So more if you, effects. If you pack your deck with allies, you can only play so many of those a turn. Yeah. Right. But technically, if you had no allies in your deck and you just draw five options. That's five things you can do to affect the board. It's a good point. But you, otherwise, you get more choice, right? It's a good point. Because you can yeah. choose to summon conjurations, or you can choose to play the options in your hand. Yeah. Um, however, the recognition is that, as we've been playing, games are effectively decided on turn two or three. As far as I can tell, most things aren't going past turn two. We, we usually make it past turn two. Maybe three? But it's finished on turn three. Yeah. There, there's no path. And like usually not like barely finished on turn three. It's like finished early turn three. Mm -hmm. So when you realize the tempo of the game, the recognition is allies are, are faster on turn one. And if our games were faster, they my seem, goodness. They seem the costed more efficiently too. I mean, in my in my experience with uh, how much dice I'm putting in. I mean, here's the thing though, right? I was looking at this for uh, Echo, like summon mi uh, mirror spirit. Mm-hmm. It's an action, exhaust, music, and a basic. Two dice. So two dice, and you get a X2-0. You chose one of the weirdest units. Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> um, so, you know, versus, like, most of the other allies I'm looking at are two cost as well. Yeah, a 2-2-1 two, two, River Skull, a 2-2-1 yeah. two, two, Iron Worker with an cra crazy ability. Both of them have insane abilities. Yeah. The Jungle Warrior, also 2-2-1 two, two, crazy ability. So, like... They're pretty efficient, and even the Holy Knight goes to three three for an extra die, and has the can't you know you can't see me ability. So they're they're very efficient because I think the game wants to think of allies as slightly more efficient than conjurations, but more dispensable. Like like they go yeah. away, and then you can't easily get them back, but you kind of can easily get them back. 
That's the grand. Ceremony. That's the grand secret. You well, kind his, of can. Historically, uh, in first edition, right, it was that the illusion die could remove dice. So you, you couldn't necessarily count on having... Like, True. you can't just run one ceremonial and get an ally back up. So that's what... Ha Illusion die getting weaker mm -hmm. made ceremonial die stronger. Which, in turn, makes allies a little bit stronger yeah. than they were previously, yeah. regardless of their stats. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's somewhat of a balancing act. But I think the obsession that you were inherently having with... As an example, Echo has a spellboard of three. Yeah. I don't have to use three spellboards. Last. I don't think anybody's going to use more than a few. Man, I hate to have a dead stat, but we better start using some uh, design space on that on that problem. Yeah. Which is not that hard, right? Side yeah. action spells that come into play and also lower cost spells that do something. Or things that say for the number of empty spellboard slots you have, this mm -hmm. thing happens, mm -hmm. right? So you can capitalize on it in that way. Um, but it seems like, and from what I'm seeing on like uh, people's suggestions for first five, and a lot of these like rush style kind of more aggro decks, I mean, it's like... If I draw any of these cards on turn two, I can probably end the game. Um, there's even some, uh, like, the, the people bringing the Hydra in and then doing all these one damage nuke spells, and they have, like, an eight damage unblockable Hydra by the end of turn one. Yeah. Like that, so the first fight, that, you, those decks aren't like, how do I fill up my spell board? It's just like, let's do one thing as fast as possible. Maybe I use one spell board slot yeah. of my eight. And also make sure that that thing doesn't go away. Yeah. Yeah. So I like the idea that I just, I feel like if you want to really have, make use of a big spell board, you're going to need the game to go longer. Yeah. So you better be packing nothing but defense for a while, at least, and then have some kind of win condition. And maybe, maybe those kinds of decks are really about running the game long, running your opponent out of cards. If their allies keep coming in and you keep dropping them. Yeah. You're not spending cards on your conjurations. You just keep casting them. Then now we're mill mill deck territory. Yeah. And mill is a viable strategy in this game, right? Yeah. Because once you run out of deck, every time you draw, you take a damage for every yeah. card you can't draw, and you're supposed to draw five every turn. So like, if you eventually get your opponent down to a certain point, um, they are on the clock. And so maybe spellboard becomes a much more important stat for people that are playing mill, which we just don't do often. Yep. As people. Yeah, because we're not. We're not those people. Those kinds of people. If you ever sitting across the table from us at a tournament, I'm not going to run you out of cards. Be, breathe a sigh. I'm breathe. not winning on a technicality, and I know that it's not that. But I, I like to, I like to uh, inhabit this soapbox whenever possible. Like how Zach in Flesh and Blood was like playing those no attack decks. What? Why? Why I'm, can't we just play the game? I'm defining the borders. I'm figuring out. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm exploring new territory. I will say, uh, let me find it here. Jeremy Sam Steven, I feel like you might be slightly overemphasizing the ability to recur allies being tied to ceremonial to recur allies. And impossible. I've never overemphasized now, anything. The, the, the more important thing is, I, I, as opposed to recurring them, if you just run a bunch of allies... Yeah, just play, like, the, play the allies. Rarely, like, that. that's really the other thing I'm starting to ask my, my questions about is, like, the value of playing a card that is not an ally versus playing another ally. Yeah. Um, especially, like, you look at Echo, he's got a battle for the six. I'm used to dealing with, like, Maoni at four, right? And, like, mm -hmm. Odette at five. Brennan at five. Six is the biggest battle I've had in a long time. So there's also the option where, like, if you're playing two or three allies a turn, you just don't need to conjure stuff. Yeah. Because you only have ten dice, so that's going to take up six, three allies a turn is six dice uh, without even having to recur anything. But it just makes you want to fill those spellboard slots up. Well, I'll tell you this. It's like running. It's like having a runner that's not using all of their MU. Why would you like? Why would you ever? Well, that's so precious. In Netrunner, though, if you end the game with more than zero credits, then you're inefficient, right? <laughs> that's right. So while you might want to fill up your memory, the reality is if you can win the game without filling up your memory, which you often did, which you often yeah. did, but you were building towards it. Yeah. So where does that leave it on putting conjuration books in your deck? Because I saw this crazy deck, man, and it was all allies up front. Like the first five was like mainly allies. And if anybody linked that on our Discord, you can let me know who I'm talking about here that built this. And then it was one of books in the deck. Like no spell boards in the first five. And then like four to five one of books I mean, I feel in the like, rest of the deck. I feel like the books get even less efficient if you're drawing them on turn That's two. That's what I'm saying. 
But at the same time... But it's just a slow ally at that point. By It's a slower ally play, right? Which could and, be worth it. And by turn two, I think the main thing is you have to be prepared to deal with someone who goes crazy on the first five. Yeah. Whatever that looks like, right? Yeah. And so I think that's where, like, you probably can't allow your opponent to go first, drop a Holy Knight. Next turn, they do some crazy side action that gets Holy Knight at five or six. Like Massive Growth is a classic. Yeah, and they yeah. just hit you for six, right? Yeah. Like six or seven or however many it is. That's too much health to just lose. So I almost think you have to have at least one ally. Yeah, you probably start with one ally. Yeah, but you look like Echo's ability. He has a side action. It placing exhaustion on a target unit at the end of the turn remove the same exhaustion token. Yeah. So even if you play something, I can sneak by. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, pretty easily. So you just, you know. There's a lot of sneakiness in this one. I also think that, like, the other, one of the other big things I've learned is how, how little 19 health is. Yeah, it goes Or quick. 18 or however mm -hmm. many it is. Um, and how important doing two or three damage is. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, it's it's a balance. I, I don't know the right answer yet, but I'm excited to find out. Yeah, me too. That's kind of where I am. I, I just got a whole so new... do you need to change new... your deck? You're gonna, what's, your, what's your plan right now? Well, what am I doing? Do you want to Do you want to take on the Rhinos? I mean, it's up to you. You can build a new deck. You can. T you want to tweak based on your new revelations? Yes, let's tweak based on revelations. You want to go to the board? Let's go to the board. It's board time. Shouldn't we, if we were a real stream, wouldn't we have like, you know, like a, uh, some kind of like catchy, catchy uh, phrases, you know, like, let's hit the board. To the table. Yeah, to the table. Yeah, see, and then you, we'd say, to the table, and then you know, something would happen. And cue like music. Blue, like Blue's you know. Clues, essentially. Like on Mr. Rogers, it's like, let's go get the mail. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, that's a very kind of you to say. It says you guys uh, both must get vaccinated because you're the definition of essential. Great. Well, that's happy to be here. super nice. Uh, Zach uh, got the first shot the other day. We've got another uh, here that's getting it today. Uh, Bryce there. And uh, I'll get it as soon as I possibly can. Yep, as soon as it's available. My arm, a uh, little uh, sore a little bit, but not bad. <laughs> You've been lifting, bro? Yeah. It, it's enough that I for it's not enough that I remember it th that it hurts until like earlier I had the French press here in the middle and I tried to pick it up. Mm. And I was just like, ooh. Mm. <laughs> this French press is too much. Yeah, it was too heavy. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm just gonna explore the uh, you know echo as he comes. Um, Steady as she goes. Not like how he's built explicitly, but like the magic schools that he's dealing in. So, some of Mirror Spirit, let's let's think about this this cat for a second. Is this something I need to think about as well? I mean, maybe. So, it, it cost me two. And uh, you put a Mirror Spirit out. A Mirror Spirit, I have three of. No recovery, two life, X attack. X is equal to status tokens on it. You just can't stay away from the status tokens, can I, I did. This was in his deck. I didn't even you're, choose it. You're, you're a man that likes to... The status. You probably just go home and just pump up like basketballs and volleyballs in your <laughs> spare time because you just love that mechanic. Pump it up. <laughs> no, it's actually, it, it all started with my fascination with Vanilla Ice when I was a kid. <laughs> pump it up, baby. Um, but really, though, uh, it, gets an, it gets a status token for each exhausted unit a target player controls. Wait a minute. When? Just forever? When it comes into play. Per oh, when it comes into play. So, like, yeah. if I play the Summon Mirror Spirit and you see it, you should have recognized that if you, in like, if we get to the late part of the turn mm -hmm. and you have, like, three exhausted units, I'm going to just get a drop of three attack in. Right, now, that's right what there. I call value. It is value. That's excellent. Yeah. There's I, nothing I can do about that. I like that conjuration uh, quite a bit. Now, other things I'm looking at. Uh, this also came in his deck, the Sonic Swordsman, <laughs> which is what this is all about, if I'm being real. It's an ally, back to that discussion. It's an action, it's like my uh, Holy Knight of this this combination. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the, both the Lion... A 3-4 for oh, hold three on. dice? Wait, you just wait. I'm playing a 7-4 for, for like 20 actions yeah, in Sion Rhino. That's, this is my, that's what I'm saying. Uh, it costs three. One's a Lion, one's Music, and one's a Basic. And it's three attack, four life, two recovery. But check this out. Sonic Pulse 1. After it destroys the unit an opponent controls by attacking, you can place an exhaustion token on a target unit. That's insane. And also, alert. Don't place exhaustion tokens on this unit as a result of countering. That's This is crazy. So if you Why attack, am I even playing this? If you attack right at me and I block with this, and I destroy your unit, 
not only do I not exhaust to do that, I also exhaust something else that you control. Yeah. Yeah. Which is just crazy town. Mm. That's so good. I, oh, wait. This is it. Yeah, it says by attacking. So if you counter and kill one of my units, you don't get to put an exhaustion token on. Just remember that. Because I saw I had two abilities that were when attacking last game. And I totally thought that countering would trigger him. So it's either or. Yeah. But it doesn't exhaust a block, and then it does exhaust it, something if it attacks. It would probably be absurd almost with no text box. So any of those abilities on there is just absolute gravy. Three, four? Yeah. I'm going to run that bear. The bears. I'm going to run that the freaking nature bear. bear. Yeah. Jeremy, you say Iron Run is a bad card. Then why did, why, why did Nick allow it to exist? He had the moment. He did have to make moment. it something magical, and apparently uh, has failed again. Here's Nick, my, you there in the chat? Here's my question for you. Give me, give me the, give me the goods here. What am I supposed how, to be doing this thing? How do you feel about gravity training? Generally, I've been doing it since I was young. Action. So it's an action to play it. Yeah. Then it's an action or a side action to use it. I love side action or any spells. Exhaust it. Spend an angel or a music note. So both mm -hmm. my dice types. Attach enhanced strength conjured. Alteration spell to target exhausted unit I control. All right, so you enhance something that's exhausted. Look at these sonic fists. Oof. They get an unexhaustible ability. It says remove all exhausted tokens from this unit at the end of each round. Okay. Plus one, plus one. Okay. So you can't get locked down by something. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know. I don't know if it's That'd worth That'd be great it. in an Iron Rhino deck. Yeah. What? They triple exhaust it and you just clear. Wait a minute, I can run uh, that. Yeah. Music here, note. why don't you pass that over here? That's what I think about it. No, I'm just kidding. I, you, you, you hold on to it. You hold I, on to I, it. I don't know that I'm using it. I will say Sonic Swordsman getting beefier is definitely in my interest. Yeah. Like as it attaches, example, it's attached to a conjuration or is it attached to a target unit? The enhanced strength conjuration attaches okay. to an exhausted unit. Okay. Um, but I also like randomly these holy relics. Mm. Two angels for plus two, plus two, Oof. specifically on the Sonic Swordsman. I need to get into alterations more. So like a five... Six. Are you gonna try to buff this Sonic Swordsman? I mean, maybe. I refuse to let that happen. He's got to go. Yeah, that Sonic Swordsman's got to go. Yeah. I uh, and I need to stop that from happening. So I, I'm just working with some things, but I, I basically pulled out cards that work, work. fit um, into my uh, dice range. Interestingly, there's not a ton. A ton. There's no way that that this. There's no way that Magic Siphon is ever going to be in here. It, it, my new thinking is just all... It, it's changed everything. It's changed everything, man. Okay. I have changed. And here's the other thing, man. I, I, a piece of me wants to go not Aradel because I don't necessarily... No, I, need, I want that Blue Jaguar, though. Oh, I'm... I'm just doing... doing poorly. Ah, so you're just going to buff a, a Sonic Swordsman? Is I, that the idea? I, don't, I mean, you can always just destroy it, right? And I have no ceremonial currently, so I have to be careful. Yeah, you got to watch but out. But I like this as a general threat. I mean, yeah, Swordsman's yeah. great. Uh, I also really like Strange Copy, specifically with Swordsman. Uh, so basically, if you attack, I can play this using a horsey um, and make any of my units have the tech that basically become a Sonic Swordsman. Who doesn't mm. have to exhaust a counter for the round, right? Well, this is this is you're getting into some some I'm not to pay attention. All uh, my surprises. Uh well I copy it replaces it. title, printed abilities, printed attack, life for cover with those of the target unit. Wow. So he becomes any unit I want, including a rhino. I need to be running this too. You're running all the cards that I need to be running. Don't do, I have... Do you have those magic types? Yeah. I got the horse. Yeah, why weren't you running that? I got the horse. I got the music note for gravity training over there. Let's just take these two decks, smash them together. And then we're off of the races. Um, so I like that card. Generically, I like Enlightenment, both because it looks awesome and it's good. Uh, I also like the Shatter Pulse. Have you seen this card? Two music notes? You should Am have I going to be playing it? You, yeah, probably if I if it's a type you could play and I'm pulling it out to look at it, you're probably going to be yeah. annoyed by it. You can play this after a unit you control is destroyed. Destroy a target unit. Change two dice and a target player's active pull to sides your choice. What? Cost you three. For three dice? How is that even worth playing? You change two dice? 
You destroy a unit. After you lose a unit, oh. you get to destroy any target unit you want. Ooh, okay. So you destroy a unit and change two dice. Okay. But yeah. it costs you three. That's super good. Um, but the ability to remove a unit straight up is just... Yeah, I want to play that one too. Chaos Gravity, definitely in. Um, I weirdly like Crescendo. It's a music note and a discarded card. You can play it after you have declared attackers. Deal one damage to a target unit. You control the deal three to a target unit. Yeah, it's good. Like, especially picturing, like, Sonic Swordsman. Be able to ping someone health wherever, three to one of your things, remove it from the board. Maybe now you can't block. Sonic Swordsman takes care of a one or two life thing, exhausts something else. Like, it just gets really uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, super good. Very quickly. Uh, hey, Nick, I see you in the chat there. Let's see what you said to my taunting. Uh, said if, uh, okay, from, from Nick himself, lead designer. Um, if huge units like Rhino are too good, they get really polarizing, like the old Elephant Rider, which I was not there for. Uh, it seems like Rhinos and Elephants are continually a problem. Reborn Rhino is still weak to many things, but is out there for the dreamers. Well, if you've never known anything about me, it's You're that dreamer. I'm a dreamer when it comes to card You games. may say he's a dreamer. Uh, and then, let's see what else. Nick's saying, I, I agree that allies are a top threat right now. I'm excited to share the new control tools that are in development when the time comes. Playtesting is some successful decks aiming for longer games. That's good. I do think a really good place for the game to start is shorter games. Yeah, sure. Like get two or three rounds, getting your reps in and stuff. Yeah. Like if it, I know there were the control decks back in the day with the birds. The owl decks. Where it was just like six turns of pain. Yeah. Yeah, I will. I will take allies being great over owls. Yeah, any day of the week. I'm not here to get stalled out by a bunch of big birds. Uh, <laughs> also, Aaron Clark, I wanted to ask yesterday. Wondering if we'll see Skytron on the table soon with the season two changes. Yeah, I, I caught those yesterday. I read that email. That's it's an incredible amount of changes. I love it. Everything the LCG should have been, Skyterra is, is essentially doing. Is doing, yeah. yeah. It's like, let's make changes to make it alive. Kudos to them. Uh, so yeah, we'll get it on the table pretty quick. Um, okay. I'm going to stay with Aerodol for now, okay? And I remember my, my biggest issue was that I had one... I essentially had one slot left. Hmm. Maybe, should I take this ally advice? Your own ally advice? Yeah. Hilarious. Or should I put, put Jaguars in the deck? You know, because that's an option. I know that the magic siphon's gone. I'm still going to live the dream of the triple rhino on turn one. All right. I'm just calling that, calling that as it is. I mean, you definitely, I mean, it worked last week, right? Yeah, it did. You eventually got to the point where we were we were cooking with gas. But what other kind of, maybe I'll run some allies in this this magic siphon slot. I'm not going to worry about filling out my spell board, because clearly that's a folly at this point. Um, Nick, did you did you guys change one, the two, three, uh, design four, of the light swordsman from 1.0 to eight, Reborn? 9, 10. Okay. Makes sense. So I could actually take a two die ally like this here flute mage. And all these people running these decks too, it's not they're not uh they're not doing it's all one ofs and stuff. You know what I mean? It drives me crazy. Anyway, harumph, etc. Et hey, what's that uh, seed of aggression do? Seed of hey, 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 hey. Just, yeah, eyes off over here. Uh, we need our, our reborn kit, so we have two collections here. <laughs> uh, what does it do? Uh, I don't know. You uh, choose a target unit that you control and one that your opponent controls. They deal damage to each other. Uh, that's not for me. Yeah, you don't need that. You don't need that. Not this dream. Yeah. Now doing seven to something? Yeah, pretty good. Maybe better? Pretty good, pretty good. But also pretty much always overkill. Hmm. Uh, Azarak, have we tried God God tier? Uh, is it similar to Sky Tier? No, I I would say they're not similar at all. I I did not uh, I did not care for God tier in the grand scheme of games. Very uh, heavy, very. 
I will always describe it as a game that feels like one of those video games where you can't jump. Yep. That's exactly what it felt like. It felt very... I didn't feel freedom uh, during the gameplay. I didn't feel like I could manifest the things that I wanted to do uh, because everything was so scrunched in and unable to, to interact in the way that I, I liked. But that's, you know, that's me. I'm that kind of a player. I like, I like freedom. Freedom! That's all that life is. Okay, Leaf, Open Memories, three dice. Five dice, because you get two back. Now, like, technically, four dice, because you get two back. Four, let's say four for the Rhino. So I've got two dice remaining and two cards. Raptor Herder, Butterfly Monk, could bring the Conjuration in or could use Aerodel's ability. So that that's actually nice. <laughs> you know what? I'm into this. What's the special power on this uh, horsey? I'm putting Jags in the deck. Special power, you like draw a card. It's really good. Yeah, draw I just a card, you can it. either put it on top or bottom of your deck, or you can keep it in your hand. That's what it is. It's right here. Why would you ever do that? I say that every time. And it's then I give you, you. Draw a card, you may choose a card in your hand and place it on top or bottom of your draw file. So you may. Yeah. All my card gaming years has taught me never to put a card back that you have in your hand. Why in the world? Um, conjurations. You got your conjuration books over here? They're right here. Okay. I'm putting Jags in the deck, man. All right. Now, I don't know that you have more than... Those Jags over there? Yeah, but I got I got more okay. more books. I don't know that you ever put more than two books in, because you don't want a three book. You don't want a three book hand. And I feel like that's what a lot of a lot of people are balancing against is is how bad are your hands when you draw three golden veils. Yeah. For instance. Uh, and we'll get there. I'll get there. Yeah, and there's a whole status token thing that you could really get into. I'm opting not to. Alright, let's think about my opening here. Um Chris Ann, but you have to do something with Rhino's stat round one. What about law of domination? Uh, what I'm gonna do with it is is attack. It's to, it's a complete trap card because it's built around uh, killing your opponent's units. Overkill 2 is kind of one of the big reasons you would run this. Uh, so I'm trying to I'm trying to make sense of that. Uh, Law of Domination seems good. What does that one do? You, you choose a thing, and they choose a thing, and they they um, they waltz, essentially, and they get the attack, attack dance in there. They waltz. Are you running the Steadfast Guardian? No. What's it do? It's fine. Nothing. Steph has guardian. Uh, it's it's real pretty. I mean, nothing else. Uh, it has unit guard. It's a one three, and you do not place exhaustion tokens on it when it counters. Yeah, you see a little you synergy. Play it? Uh, it's a it's a it's a book one. Mm. Two two dice. No time for book. Two dice for a one three unit guard is not terrible. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, Mayoni Rhino would would probably be cool. What does Mayoni do? Does she do the she? Hey, how are Side you? Side action cost two. You do uh, units attack value and damage to a unit. Hmm. So you get like side action of the rhino, do seven to something. And then swing. swing. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. I can't hate that. What did, What's her... Uh, wouldn't that be funny if I just ended up playing Mayoni? Her signature is the snake. I don't want that. Yeah. Maybe I just don't play your signature card. Maybe this is yeah, the you time you just good. you do it. My intent is to look at her playing the uh, Hydra and uh -huh. not playing the snake at all. Yeah. You ever feel, you, you, you know, you start building for Constructed and you realize you're thinking about the game like a sealed player? <laughs> yeah. Been um... There. I left my wallet out in the jag here. Any other conjuration stacks? That's it. I just miss it. What are you looking for? The Jaguar book. It's probably in my... Is it not the, the blue jag over there? Uh, maybe. Yeah, there it is. Just keep looking at this. It's a little less embarrassing. 
Um, what's an ancestor spirit do? My god, that's hilarious. Uh, nobody needs that. I don't know, one horse for a 2-1? Draw a card? It's pretty good. It's actually pretty good. Huh. I don't know, they're all good. Dang it. Ooh, oh, Jericho has uh, several tools apparently that can help the rhino dream. Uh, did we plan on playing with the AIL rules regarding the first round bans? No, not until we become degenerate. I mean, it's gonna... We're not there yet. Yeah, we're gonna have to get better. Okay, I, I have a playable deck. That's good. How playable? We don't know. Remains to be seen, but I'm Nobody gonna sleeve, sleeve this pile of cards up. Get the good cards. And leave everything else at home. Can you really... How much better... Do we have any good defensive cards? Like, just, just defense, generally? Like, hey, slow this game down cards? Anybody have any suggestions? Suggestions for uh, cards that slow the game down is what I'm looking for here. I got nothing for you. I think we might just be casting Rhino for five. That just opens up so much. Step past the uh, Guardian, Jason. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, root armor. I like that. Healing. Board wipes. These are all good ideas. Nature's wrath. Ooh, yeah, I like Exhaustion on Xerodor. That's a good idea. I just need to know what does it. Close combat. Okay. So this is going to help. What, what, what's in the, in the way of... I'm just, let's just take a fresh look. Now, are you are you hiding cards in all these decks that are good? Uh, I mean, what magic types? I have my magic types on top of the deck. Just so you can, yeah. can tell. Let's see what's in Mayoni, actually. You got nature uh, stuff no, hiding there? No, that's not even a real oh, stack. Gosh. That's all charm. Any Healy stuff? Yeah. Uh, there's some Healy. Uh, there's a, a one card that heals for a couple. I think that was in my own deck. Is it called Heal? Yeah. Close combat. All right, I'll look at that. Neil, Meteor, close combat. Okay. That's... Heal is a angel wing. Yeah, I can't play that. I think we can shop this rhino around to a lot of different Phoenix born. Yeah. There's a lot of ways to cook that stew. <laughs> okay. And I decided I am running some charm. I've... Do you guys remember what I was running last time? I think it was like four or five nature. I felt like two charm was about right and two horsies. I think it was two charm, two horsies. Maybe it was six nature. We'll see. So redirect. Redirect is a great card. Remorse is not for this deck. Vanish is not it. And my the other thing, you know, this this strange idea that I was uh, playing with, which is basically like, if I have a four cast Rhino every turn, if every other card in my deck costs one then I can cast the Rhino mm. and play every card in my hand and use Aerodel's ability forever. That seems 
efficient, right? At least interesting. It's at least interesting. That's kind of how I do. <laughs> I'm working on the ground. I'm working. <laughs> uh, Every time I see that chaos gravity. The internet. Okay. Let's see what other we got for action spells here. Move exhaustion, yes. Place one, change psyche, that's good. For my uh, fellow Way of King readers out there, uh, Echo reminds me of Zeph. This, the Chaos Gravity? One of, there's a character that like basically can manipulate gravity in the book and make, you know, all of a sudden it's like the ground is where the gravity is coming from. It's terrifying. That's what this reminds me of. He's like manipulating. Is that worth reading? Way of Kings? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm about 90% through the first book. Currently, very enjoyable. But it's a commitment. The audiobook, so Lord of the Rings, which is not small, is about 20 hours per book. Mm -hmm. The first Way of Kings book is a 42-hour audiobook. Ugh. Nobody got time for that. No. One day at a time. Hey, Close Combat's great. I can't believe I wasn't running that. Really? Noob? <laughs> yeah, noob. Idiot. <laughs> You're just not thinking well. About him if you Correction. <laughs> You're simply not thinking. <laughs> Got him. Uh, I feel like I missed every one of these cards on the first go round. Well, it's because you were blind. Being friends, yes, have heard of The Wheel of Time, uh, but have not read it. Hmm. David's darling saying, I'm reading those books now. They are so good. It's, yeah. It's selling it better than you were. Well, so everyone that it reminds me of Game of Thrones a little bit. Not, not, it's, it's better than Game of Thrones. As, as in, is it finished? Uh, um, it's not. But, oh, well, it sounds a lot like Game of Thrones, isn't it? But Brandon Sanderson, the author, is a machine. Uh, he puts out books on schedule and on time. Wow. Uh, so it will that finish. Be like... It's a 10-book series, and they've put out four books so far. Okay. All of which have come out on time. Okay. you um, got to check on these things these days. You yeah, know? you don't want to get started and just have your hopes no, dashed at the you end don't by do a that. miserable season eight of a finale show. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Nobody even talks about it. I love it. But, yeah, it's just gone. <laughs> it's uh, gone. So the Game of Thrones books, the first one, the first half of the first one, lots of world building, pretty slow. Um, and so everyone that recommended reading that was like, well, you just have to kind of get to the second half of the first book and then it goes crazy from there. Um, kind of like Dune for me. Yeah, I haven't read that yet, but it's on my list. Uh, but with The Way of Kings, the first, it's 40 hours, right? And it took me like, the first five hours I was just felt like I was falling through space and knew nothing. And then the next 10 or 15 was tons of world building. And then just pushed off the the edge it did so he and it's just crazy. started the ball rolling yeah, it's basically. very crazy right now la 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 um do you no it's not gonna do it i kind of feel like i should be getting into alterations more like things you attach to your units yeah seems good you ready for the strangest Strangest Game of Ashes you've ever seen. Oh, I can't believe that that's going to be true. It's going to be crazy. I just won't believe it. I'm going to run that body inversion again. That was, those were high times, man. I was feeling good about that. What up, Harold? Glad to have you. Harold's a Phoenix born. Harold said, by the way, hello, I've been watching your content mostly through video on demand, so watching it after the fact since last March. Wow, and I've shared great, your huh? channel to many of my friends. One friend actually just purchased a few of your Arkham Horror compatible boards and token sets as an early birthday gift for me. They're absolutely incredible, somehow even better in person. That's great. I love hearing that stuff. Yeah. That's why we do it. You you love to hear it. You love to hear it, man. You love to hear it. Okay, I'm looking my my final uh my final Thomas Briggs has a good question for you. I'm trying to distract you so I have a chance of winning. What is it? He says, Stephen, do I remember correctly that you were a philosophy major? That's what, right. What was your favorite topic slash area of interest? Do you have a philosopher that captivated you the most? Uh, so 
I pretty quickly um, took an Eastern philosophy class early on before it was even my major. So I was an environmental science major. I, I, took an, I took an Eastern philosophy class per my brother's recommendation because he had it as a uh, kind of as an elective credit. Said it was kind of a life changing class for him. I took it. I got so into it that I changed my major to philosophy with a emphasis on Eastern philosophy uh, and then proceeded to study primarily Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Confucianism. Uh, and kind of went down that track. So like I learned the basic like symbolic logic and Western philosophy and, and 19th century, 17th century, that kind of stuff. Kant and Kierkegaard and all those guys. Um, and the monads, the monad guy, I can't remember him, Spinoza, I think. Uh, but what really reverberated with me was uh, the Eastern philosophical tradition that was really less about like, um, it felt less about like rational games and more about how to live a life and have a perspective that is, uh, you know, going to make your life better actively uh, and maybe uh, show some truth uh, through a, a lens that is kind of clouded as well. So that's what I got into. Um, so I don't really, I can't really talk, I can't really like quote like, ah, oh, yes, uh, here's the argument that Kant was making aside from like categorical imperative, uh, critique of pure reason kind of stuff. But I feel like I can uh, talk more about like the nature of self and um, the illusion of certain things that we take to be true. Let's say Maya, if you will. So there's a kind of much ado oh about perhaps nothing. You know, deep freeze is pretty tempting. Back to deep freeze. You just like ice boxes. Well, absolutely. <laughs> David Wilford saying the Ashes tokens look amazing. I cannot wait to play with them. Thank you. That, that is one of my uh, favorite designs we've ever done. Just something about it. It's pretty magical. Deep Divin saying, will UK subscription be up in time for Jericho? You know. Great question. Uh, it's a great question. Uh, it, honestly, I'm not necessarily expecting it, just given the timeline of everything. But we're working on that as fast as we can. And it will be available as soon as we can reasonably make it the case. Hey, this is actually... I've been missing all Tim, of these. Tim saying the other night he played Echo, so dope. Uh, what, when have you been playing? Hmm? You, you cheating on me? <laughs> I knew that was coming. Absolutely knew it. <laughs> oh, man. Steven Gleason saying, oh, man, Taoism is a trip. Uh, it'll change your entire perspective on life. It's everything, yeah. Chuang's a particularly. Not well, says, like, the Tao Te Ching, like, yeah, this is a... But it's all wrong though. For David Vegel hit my, the heart. It has the hard hitting questions. Stephen, is the illusion of free will uh, get you the same result as actual? Free yes, will? it's a distinction without a difference entirely. It's not even a problem worth thinking about, honestly. It doesn't change anything, no matter your conclusion. Nothing. Your experience is the exact same. Yep. It's just like that. Every act is a selfish act thing. It's like essentially good luck proving it, right? <laughs> So if you can't give me an example of an act that isn't selfish, you aren't telling me anything about how to behave, right? Karl Popper, falsification idea. If you can't give me an example of the thing that you say is happening in the negative, if you can't show me like how this would not be true, then it's, it's like a truism. It's not even contributing to any amount of insight. Because it just is. It just is. If you say every act is a selfish act, human beings are selfish, and then you, you go on to say the soldier that jumps on the grenade to save his friends is actually being selfish because he doesn't want to live with the guilt of his friends dying. Fine. But if there's no opposite to a selfish act, then all you're saying is every act is an act. Sure. Done. Yeah, if there is no opposite, it's just a thing. It's just, the, okay, this yeah. is the way that life is. Cool. It, but it doesn't enlighten anything, does it? I feel like... Uh... Very wise. Yeah. Very Socratic. I'm, I'm with it. I feel like, yeah. Very Eastern. <laughs> yeah. I feel. I feel. No need. No <laughs> need to go further. I am. <laughs> Jordan S. says, Stephen, Fadeaway is the strong, strongest sonic swordsman. He doesn't need tech for me. I don't, I'm not teching against Zach here. But... Torres, you should check out the, the Tao of Pooh. Winnie the Pooh the is more Pooh. insightful than you'd think. I've definitely heard that. That's a good one. Winnie the Pooh is one of my favorite uh, characters. I, every, like all the quotes that you hear from Winnie the Pooh, have, have you, I think it's called Christopher Robin was the movie that came mm -hmm. out with Ewan McGregor in it. Did you see that? I didn't see it, no. Nope. That movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. Well, that's, that's important. It is both hilarious 
and touching and also quite philosophical. Okay. All, all the Count things. me in. Uh, hey, would you look at these cards and tell me which one is best? Root armor, close combat, safeguard, a really strange card that I don't even really like, but I, I want to like it safeguard, more. Safeguard, choose the unit of Phoenix party control until the start of your next turn, prevent all damage. So that only really matters if your opponent's telegraphing damage or if you need a moment where you don't need to worry about blocking. Well, so like if I side action, choose the Rhino, right? Is that, do you have to choose a unit? Yep. All right, let's say I choose a unit. I choose the Rhino because I have, let's say I've taken a damage and you have a three attack unit and then I swing with a Rhino. Can't stop, won't stop. You either block, do nothing back to me. I do the two damage from the trample ability or whatever. And or you're just like, well, if I can't kill the rhino, I got to take seven. Well, and then anything that results in them just taking seven is <laughs> worth your time. And then the return volley, you can't attack the rhino at all. So I get yet another turn to utilize the uh, the power of the the horn. Yeah, not. It's I don't not think bad, it's, right? I don't think it's bad. Check out close combat. All right, a frog. Choose an unexhausted unit you control. Deal damage to another target unit equal to the chosen unit's attack value. Then place a wound on the, or exhaustion on the chosen unit you control. Why would you not run that with a rhino? Why would I not? Well, I got all these cards here. What do you mean? I, I got to choose some of them, don't I? I mean, maybe that's the reality. You don't. Maybe you choose them all. Uh, all right, so close combat is in, you're saying? Well, I mean, let me... I'm just comparing. I haven't even gotten to the finale here, right? Root armor. It's also a leaf, so it's a uh, weaker frog. Mm -hmm. This unit has the following ability, armored one. Oh, plus one life and also permanent prevent one? Yeah. It's a more permanent rhino, right? Is it not? I mean, how confident are you that your rhino's not going anywhere? So I felt like four life was a huge liability last game. Yeah. Like four... everything's attacking for three. You got a nature die and a unit out. The rhino's dead. Four is right on that line, isn't it? Yeah. But five with one prevention is hard to deal with. It is nigh impossible uh, with damage. So, you know, I think... It almost might be the case that, like, I don't know what your first five strat looks like, but, like... Yeah, you do. If you understand who, like, what you're playing against and what their answer is... So, like, as an example, you see Echo, it's probably Exhaustion more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So then Root Armor is, like, way less important, potentially. Yeah. But the thing that makes it really hard for me to exhaust you, like the, the Gravity Train, as an example, uh, might be the ticket. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, like, you know you're triple rhinoing, and then you're also drawing your cancels and answers but you know okay I, i'm into I, I that i don't know so here's the thing about triple rhino aside from everything about it <laughs> we have to decide if we're going to play the rhino on the first turn or not yeah although we can we can at least give ourselves options we've been down this road before so i kind of like the idea of you're gonna have to decide do you play the blue jaguar in deck or in hand first five because it's Aerodel's signature, and it's a great unit. So do you really want to leave it up to chance? And you got the Butterfly Monk. That's an important unit, too. Unit guards, it helps the Rhino. It also heals that one damage that can be really awful. Um, it also heals your Phoenix Born if you need to, so that you can keep, keep the game going a little bit longer. So I, you know, I just don't know. The first five is like the, the, the whole game. It's like, yeah. a, it's like your, the deck building is so bound by the first... Or... You just got Resonance Iron Rhino, have a five cost Rhino for the rest of the game, and then you get a card in your first five. You you open up a card slot? You open up a slot. Yeah. Yeah. It's just insane. And then, you know, you got the Raptor Herder as a, a pretty good one turn one drop to deal with problems. It's one die, it creates two units you can block unless they have the, you know, the deal one to everything, which they might. That's fine. They got to play it. Yeah. Um, so Raptor Herder is good up front. I think you choose one of these. I try to do both. I just don't know if I can. Yeah. I mean, there's also the reality of like you play this and then you don't summon the Rhino on turn one. I know. That's, yeah, that's where we're at. Because like, because this is that. That all happens. And that's three cards. Yeah. Then you got two slots. And this, if you don't play the Rhino on turn one, man, you're in the money. So then you're like, play the Rhino for one, open memories, that's three, four for resonance, five for the second Rhino, if you want. 
like just to stack it up. So then you've got five dice and two cards. So then you need like a beefer unit. Do you just Bugatti out some kind of a big ally? Probably. Which we did with like the 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 jungle uh, fiend. Make a panther spirit one. The... Do you have that in there? No. You have that somewhere. Yeah, it's somewhere. I think I saw it out. Didn't wasn't the hunt master out somewhere? Not, not that immortal here. commander looks awesome. I love that immortal commander. Oof. Yikes! Every time. Right, so um, we'll look at that. So we can get a B for ally if we want. Because the other thing is, like, I almost feel like once you, if you're going all in on Rhino, pretty much every card you draw should be about protecting that Rhino. Yeah, I think so. Protecting or making him insane. But I also, you know, I'm also going to have two instances of the spell. So like. If you just have to go out of your way to get rid of it, and I can just summon it again. Yeah, for that's four, true. So maybe know? the thing you should really be concerned with is exhaustion. Because mm -hmm. if you don't care if they blow up your rhino, in fact, it almost lets you use your rhino aggressively. Just don't care about it. Just send it at their biggest thing. Send it, yeah. Knowing it's going to go away, but it's going to overkill to remove their best unit, and you can just bring another one out. Yeah. Four dice, man. Four dice. Like, if you're going the four dice option... I think, I think that's right. Then I think you have to just... Recklessly use it, knowing you can summon it again. Yeah, because honestly, going to the reckless two, rhino. Going it's to already got a two, clever name. If you if you, the first thing you do is put a rhino on the table, they essentially just have to deal with it right now. Yeah, so that's where like you swing into their biggest unit problem. They either take seven on their phoenix born or lose their biggest unit and take two anyway. Um, yeah, and you can do fun tricks. I but like, like that. last time, that was one of the problems I ran into is you had a rhino out. I could deal with it, but you could also just summon it again for four. And so I was like, I would rather just get it exhausted and not have to let him summon it again. I'm into that. And in fact, this revolutionizes everything. Yeah, because then the only problem you care about is exhaustion. And that means I can get away from Aridel. And instead... It's about to get weird. It's going to get really weird. That's why we're here, though. To get weird. We can do... Uh, now we just get to have fun. Which I hate. Um, ooh, you're so good too. I love Ramia. I'm not going to... I'm not doing that. Um, yeah. Uh, you've got... You've got... Uh, somebody was saying Rin with the ice buffs. And I love that idea. Mm. I love that idea so much. The iron ice right now. And you've got Rin's Fury, which is the best card in the game. The super life spirit bomb. Oh my gosh. It's the perfect Phoenix born. Look at Rin's Fury. Play it after unit control is dealt damage by an attack. Prevent it and destroy the target attacking unit. So if they attack the rhino, it's huh. bad. And then he's got the little ice buffs for plus one life. Every turn. What's Rin's ability? Let's go. It attaches a plus one life ice buff side action. Wow. You said it, man. Who, who suggested that? You're a genius. Uh, Metroplex was the one who suggested it with the most uh, exclamation points, at least. So, hey, look. We get to play me in a card game. Just fine. The male I version. I didn't ever see Tim give me an answer on yeah, he who didn't. he's been cheating he's on lying. with and when. It's because he's lying. Played a game yeah, yesterday. Yeah, just lying. All right, Rin's Fury is going in. Boom, boom, boom. Man, this is a this is a something. You have the signature cards for all air down to put with it. Yeah, that's just that jag. Left my wallet out there. And the jag. Do you know that story? Robert, tell you that story? Mm -mm. When he was working uh, food service at I think it was Ruby Tuesday. Um, oh God. Guy came in, you know, an insufferable guy. I already then, I already put that together. It comes time comes time to pay, and it's like, oh man, I left my wallet out in the jag. I'll be right back. And you know, it's irrelevant to the server what kind of car you drive. Yeah. So he could have just said, I need to go get my wallet out of the car. Jag makes you think he's got money. That's what he wants you to think, yes. And then he never came back. Well, we don't know if it was a Jag at all. He left, though, right? No, he came back. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I think he paid, yeah. But it's just like, hey, we don't need to know what kind of car you drive. Just get your wallet. Tim apparently said he played on TTS. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aridel's out. Don't worry, I always I always organize these cards afterwards. Do I not? Do I not? As long as the cards stick together and go right in the right category, it's cool because I don't care what order they're in. Mm-hmm. 
I'm taking the Blue Jaguars out entirely. And it's a shame because I love them, but you know, they don't feel as good as they used to feel. The Jags? The Jags used to be like ridiculous. I remember early on, like the first, just out of the core set, those yeah. Jaguars were yeah. nuts. Indeed. And then new things came out, you know, and that changed everything. As far as we know, there were birds, lots of birds. Then, then the birds came, and it was Alfred Hitchcock. Give them the birds. Give them the birds. Okay. We've got a rhino. I think we're going to stick with Butterfly Monk as well. What I'm up, just going to shuffle Checking this thing up, UK. man. <laughs> uh, Galactus humor is ever-present. It's Galactus <laughs> up, too, anyway. <laughs> I'm not even going to read the comment, but it is funny. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, this, this, man. this. Now, I have a one-of a one of slot. Oh, you know how I feel about this one. That, you gonna get that root armor in here? Let's do a one up. What's the one first five thing that? May, oh, I need close combat in here. Let's do. Are you telling me you switched Phoenix Born and your deck came together that quickly? Yeah, it's the same d dice type. It's the same nature. Mm. You, are you running cover over there, or is that just in the fun times? Yeah, I'm running cover. It's in here. I'm gonna cut what about John the Bard. One. Chris S says bye bye Jaguars. Hello Bears. What up, Claire? Hope you're doing well. I'm going to cut one thing and put in two close combats. All right. So you have two twos instead of one, two, one, one, and one, three. That's right. Or I could cut two raptor herders, just have it in my first five. There, there's math there, no, but I, I like think this. two ofs in this game are going to be really common. Yeah. Probably do one I, ofs too. Do I cut one exhortation or is that the win condition? You just, you got to keep it in. You got to have it. You never need more than one. I agree with that. Let's cut it. It won me the game last time. Cut it. <laughs> That's right. Don't need it, man. I don't even remember that game. Glad to hear that, Claire. You did. You did uh, pull some. That was fun. High jinx on me. That, that was, was one of my favorites. Jinkies, but I was like, that's not the right word. <laughs> that's what. Uh, what's your uh, Scooby Doo thing? Scooby says, yeah. Yeah. Thelma. Thelma. That's right. I used to love that show. Really? I I didn't know anybody who actually liked it. There's. It's, it was always on. It was always on Cartoon Network, but I was like, ah, oh, Scooby-Doo. I watch it, but I don't want to. <laughs> you didn't get a choice back then. No, you didn't. It, we it watched shouldn't... the TV that they gave us. That's Jack. right. Here are some other cards you thought you were going to run. One, two, um, <laughs> three, four, five, six. It shouldn't have surprised seven, me that eventually eight, I would get into something like like Arkham, um, shows like Stranger Things, True Detective. Because Scooby-Doo is, is exactly that, except for sometimes the creepy thing is actually the creepy thing. Mm -hmm. Instead of fake, like some old dude in a mask. Yep. Yeah, you're not wrong. Which is another way of saying you're right. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's uh, on camera too, so I can always go back and rewatch that moment. You would just clip it, make yeah. a gif. You're this right. Was the time that you're right. Steven agreed that I was right. Um, I, for whatever reason, when I, was, when I was a kid, I actually really thought Scrappy Doo was particularly funny. Because his, oh. his head was the size of his body. Oh, wow. He does a little, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you would later find out he's just doing a lot of drugs. Yep. Which Claire saying is there's a certain, new collectible card game. Certain kind of fun. I don't think so. But, you know, you remember that uh, House on Haunted Hill Mansion thing? Game that we used to play? <laughs> I forget what it's called. They house made, on the Mansion Hill? They, uh, house... Haunted, haunted, haunted horror um, <laughs> mansions of uh, house, the fifth house. The house on the haunted hill mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what it was called, but it's something like that. Uh, they made a Scooby Doo version. No, oh, that which I've heard is actually really good. That actually is that's pretty smart there. Uh, Star Wars saying, "See, I'm the age where I hated Scrappy." I, I do think that's true. So it depends on the age you were watching it at. Adults didn't think he was funny. Mm -hmm. Seven year olds did. Yeah, because adults saw it as like a, you know, like a, a, a terrifying what if my child becomes Betrayal this? Betrayal at House on the Hill is I, the name of the game. Action spell, discard. Do you separate discard spells, there reactions, a, and actions? They're, everything that's discard is in the same. Discard spells. Doesn't matter if it's reaction or, yeah. or action. Yeah. Okay. That's just fine. Yeah. Allies are going in? Yeah, as long as it's a discard spell. The ready spell board stuff is its own category. Of course. Yeah. I, but, you know, we're thinking now we shouldn't even be thinking like this. Because what is a, what is a conjuration ready spell versus an action spell? It's all kind of the same economy, is it not? Eventually. You can just put those anywhere. Yeah. All right, you want to play one? Yeah, you ready to get echoed? Echo! Echo. You vibrate, vibrate, vibrate. 
It's an old Mr. Scruff song, if anybody's interested. Jonathan, I know you're just so pleased to be hearing it right now. Is that your magic pool? Yeah, it kind of came together as a, a guess, so I should probably <laughs> verify that. Do you have a uh, token box? Is that somewhere around? Was Ashes tokens? I see him in, in that box he's put on the ground. I can't reach. Yeah, I got him. Who made those beautiful tokens anyway? Uh, you know, I designed and manufactured them myself. <laughs> well, I had no idea. It's yeah, been so long ago. I'm, I'm skilled in that way. Uh, lots of I have often been described as a man of many talents. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, That's how I you introduced know, you. you we know, did. Uh, Jonathan particularly designed these like a champ. Some of the best. It's just. It's just in. It's just hitting. Yeah, it was just a. I think it's his realm. Yeah, he's a magical kind of person. He likes <laughs> yeah. to think in magic. That Titanic party, he definitely was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had his wizard cloak on. <clears throat> Okay, I do have a lot of, uh, I do have a lot of nature in here. Yeah, it makes sense. You were an environmental science major. That's right. This deck is is the transformation of environmental science to philosophy right here. It's the crossroads. That's right. Between those two very important only, sciences. Only somebody as overblown as a philosopher could think to run an iron rhino. I, I can, can I can make the case for this. It's like, yeah, you can write the paper. There's but. two kinds of people that play hard and working. I won't I won't talk further about them. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dreamers, man. The dreamers. The dreamers and the schemers. Everything look good out there? Let us know if anything's too dark or out of focus or whatnot. It's hard. We've got like seven monitors and uh, then YouTube compresses everything. So if it's if it's too dark or out of focus, you let me know. I'll risk life and limb to make it okay. Chris saying, waiting for my Stormlight Arcade card game or just Cosmere, I'm pretty certain, isn't that flesh and blood? It's real close, if not. We exact. know they were inspired by it. Yeah, Shiana reminds me so much of Yasna, it's crazy. Dude, I just rolled seven basics. All right. It's not a problem for a Rhino deck. Odds are high I'm going first. <laughs> okay. And remember, I'm just going to lose early and then i'm gonna win at the end i'm like a pace horse all right i'm into it okay it's so fun to shuffle these little decks it's just nothing when you get used to like constructor for flesh and blood 60 cards feels like a lot i've been playing a lot of 30 card games for a long time ashes yeah uh, destiny I mean, is also 30 and it's five less too you know so it's like I, it's 25 these these tiny healing hands can easily mm -hmm. shuffle them. See, look, everybody can follow along. Look at that. Look at that shuffle. Just like butter. I look like one of those guys who's been playing Magic for a thousand years. You've been playing cards uh, for some time. Well, uh, I get my tap my lands. Stephen Gleason saying, wait till you try to shuffle a 99 card commander deck. Well, that might be happening sooner than later. Actually, it might, funnily enough. We're cutting every game and selling only magic. We all knew it was inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> we, fought, we fought it for a long time, but we've given up. All we want are planeswalkers. I'm going give my spell for, for dice up here in the pocket. All right, now roll your dice so I can see if I need to re-roll these seven basics or not. I'm hoping you roll seven basics. Man, first time I played a tiefling in Dungeons and Dragons, that was crazy. I loved building those tiefling characters. They were insane. They were the iron rhino at the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got it. I've got three. three basics there. So that means I go first. You get to choose. Found that out recently. As I said, that means I go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'll nicely organize my dice for this one moment in the game. And then, and then they're all hell will break loose shortly. Look after. at this three colors, man. Next level. You ready? You ready to party? What's up, Biz Cotter? Hey, welcome. You didn't miss anything. Actually, almost nothing. It's amazing being hours in and you having actually not missed much of anything. Just some good conversation, some friendship, some laughs, but this is our first game. You ready? Yeah. Let's meditate. Mm, weak. I'm going to need weak opening. a lot. 
So this is going Lion Angel. Wait, don't I have to first five different against you? You just place Lion. exhaustion tokens. Mm -hmm. Um. Lion. No, I'm scared. Basic. Run it. Yeah. Run it, Charlie. Charlie Parker. Horsey. Run it. All right, hold on a second. I'm going to have to redo this. No, I'm going to do it as it is. And then we'll just deal with it. I meditated. Then I'm going to play Gravity Train. Okay, no threats then. Nope, I didn't push tempo here. No threats, no threats. Justin asking, are we going to play Commander? We are. Yep, it's on the list. You know what? This is all different now. It's a whole new world. A new fantastic point of view. We just break out into song. Okay. You're on your uh I'm at a here. to a lion, not an angel. Yeah, it's smart. That's the big one, right? Yeah. The animal is always the power sign. Raptor herder. Here's your tempo, buddy. I'm not your tempo, buddy. Here's a raptor hatchling there. All right. Thank you. That was, that was on a nice land. All right. Uh, mine, you say? Yeah. Let's play a sonic swordsman. It's going to be a lion, a music note, and a bass. And a wardrobe. And a witch in a wardrobe. Um, and then side action. Bum, 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 bum. Chocolate rain. Um, I'll pass my side action. Yeah. All right, let's play the Rhino. Mm-hmm. Echo player's like, noob. Idiot. And then, uh... no, I'm not. I'm going to play Summon Butterfly Monk. Mm, smarter. Then I'm going to meditate one up. Oof, exhortation in the discard pile. Up to uh, this one, the horse there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Interesting. Interesting. Well, let's play what we got. You know, play the cards you dealt. Well, you technically chose them. You know, so. Yeah, I did very much choose them. It's strange how that works. Side action, let's exhaust uh, your raptor herder. Oh, come on. Yeah, you know I'm playing the rhino and you're going to waste that on the on a raptor herder? What are you going to do, summon a rhino? I might. I, I ain't scared. A swordsman is going to swing at your raptor hatchling. If it kills it, you can exhaust something? Yep. Any other shenanigans there? Uh, you can you can kill it. Okay, so I will put an exhaustion here. Yeah, exhaust there. Side action. Just waiting for that mirror spirit, huh? Uh, we're going to summon enhanced strength and put it onto the swordsman. That just gives it recover infinite. Uh, plus one attack, plus one life, and then. It, uh, it can remove all exhaustion tokens at the end of the round. Okay. We'll play a little summon iron rhino. That's how it works. Well, actually, at the start of my next round. Round or turn? At the end of this turn. Oh, so I basically exhaust you out for a turn. He's a, it's a temporary. Oh, that's better. Yeah. That's way more fair. Uh, so summon iron rhino there for the leaf, and then we're going to side action resonance. Uh, two... 
music keys and a basic, and then we get to put two back in at my pleasure. Oh, apparently I used two side actions. You fool. What was my other side action? Look at that beautiful frog. I don't think I did another side action. The swordsman thing? Didn't you echo and then swordsman That's here? right, that's right. Yeah. Echo, you vibrate. Okay, done. Resonated. Focus yeah. one on that summon iron rhino. Don't mind me, can cast it right now. If I so choose. Magic missile. Uh, let's play a summon mirror spirit. Will all be. This is interesting, actually. I don't really want to play this. Bring on the rhinos. I think the five cost rhino is the way to go here for the game. Put up the big old threat. Well, I just think five cost, like not running. Open memories is three dice to get minus one to the rhino. For that to pay off... You have to have four turns. That's four turns. That's crazy. Impossible. Well, it also lets you summon two rhinos on the same turn. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, not, not the cost, but the literal, if you mm -hmm. summon one and then mm -hmm. I deal with it, you, yeah. You can technically summon another one and kind of... But weird. I don't disagree with you. I think it might be too much. Send in the clowns. Well, now I'm in a pickle. All right, I'll uh, I'll do this, and then you've got some sort of exhaustion forever card, I imagine, right? Echo just exhausts everything. I don't think it's that crazy. Um, and see if I search my deck for any card, and then I play the Rhino, I'm out of dice. Unless there are free cards out there, which there are some that you can play for free, but yeah, not do like anything books. Here. Yeah, I don't think I have books in my deck though. Yeah, you removed all those. I Why does there. Rhino cost a leaf? You know, you ever think that? To put the spell? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Have you not taken enough from me? I like that you're choosing to play him and feeling like you got something taken from him. Oh, uh, yep. Story of my life there. Okay. I'm just reluctant to do it, you know? To pay five when you could pay four? Well, not even that. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're doing it. We're doing it. I'm giving away open memories. Just a just a bogus opening. But you learned something here. I you? learned something, didn't I? I learned that I'm going to lose this game and then redo it. I don't know if you're going to lose. Chomp, chomp. There's the rhino side action. We're going to put an ice buff. Hmm, yeah, spicy. Five life rhino coming in. Spicy meatball. Um, all right, let's answer. Beta Antha. Let's summon a mirror spirit. You have one exhausted unit, so it's going to get one status token. It's got one attack. Mm -hmm. and then side action. I will... I used the music note and didn't put it back. No, that's the music note from it. So let me count them. You can count them. That's a cool thing. I use three here. Zero... I just use this and this for that. And then I side action there, music note to do this. That's your turn? Yep. So you got something that when you when something dies, it's gotta be bad for me, right? I can just block you. Call it a day. Oh yeah? We both not have memories. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> okay. I've got I've got I've got options here basically. As you might expect. Did I go first this turn? I went first. That's good. That's good. 
Hmm. So one option is do one with a side action and pass. But then if you pass, it's not really good for me. But then I can threaten next turn side action swing for seven. I'm just going to swing at your mirror spirit. With El Rhino? With El Rhino. Decision time. All right. Um, <laughs> He's got a reaction. I'm going to react. See, this should probably be like a Golden Veil. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to strange copy. Ooh. My Mirror Spirit's going to become an Iron Rhino. Cool. It's anything or your unit? A place spot for an opponent declares an attacker is choosing a unit you control to become a top copy of a target unit for the remainder of the turn. While a copy that unit replaces its title, printed abilities, and printed attack, life, and recover values with that of the target unit. That's pretty cool. If a printed value is X, uh, use the current value of X. All right. So, so we kill each other, you take T to your Phoenix That's point. right. That's pretty good exchange right. for you. All right, fine. It's good use of four dice thing. I mean, two damage and removing my unit and That's taking up that card. I had to spend three resources to do that same thing. Okay. And you did two damage. So basically one net resource for a damage. For three damage. I like it. All right. Uh, but then now this is where it gets a little saucier. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pay three for a Holy Knight. Holy Knight. The yeah. Butterfly Monk coming in. Yep. Taka. Mm. Swing your fans for Great questions. Great question. What up, kid? What's his name on the chat? What's up, kid? What's up, kid? Definitely adopting that. You know how grading that would be? Mm hmm. What up, kid? Mr. League saying, I want this so bad. It's coming as soon as we can get it out to you. I reckon I probably should have killed that swordsman, huh? Would you have blocked his echo on that? On the swordsman? Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah, I think you had to. Uh, but if I do, amazingly, then I can I can still make the mirror spirit a copy mm -hmm. of the rhino. And now I've got a rhino coming at you. Is it only when I'm attacking, though, that you can trigger that? When you attack, I can play it, but I stay that way for the round. Huh. The round or the turn? It's gotta be the turn. This, this game doesn't know rounds. The remainder of the turn. The remainder of the turn. Yeah. All right, so three on a monk. Hmm. Bogus. Absolutely bogus. I probably do block with Echo, and then I would use my... Uh, yeah. That is quite a pickle. I am going to go and block with the monk. Okay. As much as I really want to be able to trigger this ability. Thanks, I take one. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, my turn, I'll just leave the frog. I'll pass. All right. This is I'm me. discarding this. Garbage card. The epitome of efficiency. Recover that boy. Yeah. I want you. Mildly better dice. I don't like the way these dice roll. Mm -hmm. I want you so bad. Bum, bum, bum. Wow. All right, don't pay attention to what I'm doing here. I'm not. Not at all. I'll do the same thing. You were lost. <laughs> All 
Oh, my darling Clementine. Okay. No horsing around. Let's do... The old five die rhino. A lot more expensive than a four. I gotta tell you. And then buff it. <laughs> He's buff. Side action. There's a five. Okay. Courtesy of Ren Northfell. Your favorite and mine. All right. Let's play something to get in the way. Dun, dun, dun. Ding, ding, ding. Do, do, do. Uh, this is interesting. 19, maybe swing for seven. He also might have that. Oh, you know. Who's to say? Activation. Who's to say? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see, I see. I exhort, you exhort, we exhort. We all exhort. It's really an interesting... Uh situation. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of value on the table, buddy. Thank you. Lots of value. <laughs> Some chunky allies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're playing into the strategy we were talking about. Yeah. Um... Uh, let's see what we got. Are we doing any Nisei content? Uh, Mr. Lee? Is this this is not there anymore, right? Yeah, I just put it there. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, no. Uh, probably not. It'd be fun, but um, it's kind of difficult. It'd be a throwback for us if we were to do it. I mean, we can't sell the game. We, we got no subscriptions for it or anything. So, like, spending all the cash to do content for it is kind of hard to justify. We, we I mean, we... We do it anyway, a lot of the time, but um, no plans to do that. And then uh, SkyTerror Season 2, yeah, Joseph, we're looking at that. Maybe this week or next we'll get SkyTerror on the table. Those changes are awesome. Yeah. Uh, really, really cool. Let's get bodies on the table. What the no. bodies on the table? That's such bad value because there's no exhausted units. It could be a two damage unit if I wait. These things are going to die so fast. Let's do it anyway. Some uh, Mirror Spirit, no attack value. Oof. Uh, but, you know, it can become something else later. You know what I mean? I kind of do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. And then uh, side action to a horse. No reason. You gotta watch out for that horse stuff, man. Yeah, that's the card that lets me duplicate, you know what I mean? You gotta watch out for that horse stuff. Okay, well, how about this? How about... Let's do a little... Uh... Let's do a little Seeds of Aggression with my own horse. Uh, I'm going to do seven to your swordsman and take four from said swordsman, courtesy of that card. This is not a good time. Well, uh, so you're taking four. Yeah. So if I do one. Rhinos hate swords. So 
just think about that. Okay, yeah, you, you got it. All right, I'm going to meditate too. Ooh, two golden veils into the discard pile there. Just going to these out for you. Okay. Thanks. I have to think about this. Link, what's the throwback for tomorrow? We're doing Wars CCG, which is, as we understand, a Star Wars CCG without the star. It looks dark, does it not, on the monitor? Well, I can't tell. I mean, look at it compared to the, the card on the screen. That card is very bright compared to It's there. not dark out there, you guys? Seriously, it's not like... Uh, it's not dark? Um, Just leave that right alone and I'll, I'll do it again. Smidge dark? All right, I, that's all I need. The power of the ISO. Now, is that too bright? That's the question now. There's a way for me to do this. Well, I hope not. Now, if somebody can explain to me how the same studio with the same lights and the same cameras with the same settings can be darker or lighter on any given day, you let, please just let me know. Everybody says way better, so, you know. Now we know. Bryce, is really humidity? Are you messing with me? Is it actually humidity? Okay, you're joking. Thank you. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, that looks way better. Never give up. Trust your instincts. You know, I put a rhino on the table and you start going, you just start thinking so much. I like it. No reason. Okay, yeah, that's all fine. Um, I mean, I guess if you're willing to trade it, that would be fine. Fine by me. Um, let's swing at uh, Ren with my Holy Knight. For three? Yep. Oh, no. Yeah, that's fine. I'm okay with that. All right, take three. Yeah. Side... We want side action. I'm a side action. Side... No, I will... I'll go ahead and side action. Side Spend action. Here. I'm a side action. We're going to make that action. whole night just a little better. Do you have that... Uh, do you have that stuff? I mean, what do you have? It, it's holy. It's going to get weird. Because I want to kill that holy night. Come at me, bro. But even if you unexhaust it, you know, do you have it? Is there any cards I hear to just kill attacking units outright? Do I need to know about those cards? What do those cards do? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I, you just gotta walk in all the traps up front, don't you? Yep. <laughs> yes, you sure do. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe you play it cool. Keep stacking. Uh, Keep stacking the value here. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, I couldn't do the side action first because you can only attach it to uh, exhausted units. So you have to be exhausted to be able to play gravity. You just gravity train. Put the butterfly monk out. Monkalicious. All right, all right. And uh, side action somewhere. Boy, howdy. I wish I could do more ice buffs. Keep freezing that rhino. Let's go ahead and bump a uh, leaf to a frog. 
I like them. I like them on their big sides. I just don't know what anybody has. It's like the most frustrating feeling. At least in flesh and blood now, I know everything that's possible. Not, Almost everything. Not anymore. Ashes is still so much like, what is in that spell book? Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and do an enlightenment. Using an angel and a basic and to remove an exhaustion token from a target card. Should I have killed that holy knight? Did you have anything to stop me from doing that? Well, I mean, swinging at my holy knight? Yeah. I could just block you with echo if I wanted it. Okay, take seven. That's fine. But should you have? I, we'll see if you regret it by the end of the round. Happy with that. Okay. Um... Well, I feel like I'm looking for value here. Uh, and you might have another one of those copy and cease and desist kind of situations <laughs> or whatever. I could easily have another copy of Strange Copy. Mm -hmm. And I have a horse show to be capable of it if I have it. It is pretty strange. Well, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't really know. I could uh, attack that Holy Knight. It's like that, this is so like chess. It's like that moment where like, you could trade a piece, but like. Well, I just, chess is nice because there's no variables. There are very variables here. Yeah, it's like there had to be a reason an exhausted holy knight is not worth attacking because otherwise the trade is just like wildly so good that I don't imagine you could let it happen. It would not. It would not be possible. So now <laughs> we're back. Um. I don't think that the chain of events that would have happened if you'd attacked the Holy Knight would end in your favor. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Let's go Raptor Herder to Mirror Spirit. <laughs> this is actually really funny. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to block with Echo. Okay. That's why it's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to do one to me, right? Yeah. Uh, when you do, I'll react with a horsey sympathy pain. No. Uh -oh. I can play a spell after one or more wound tokens are placed on my Phoenix Born as a result of an attack, spell, ability, or dice power, etc. So deal two damage to a target unit or Phoenix Born that opponent controls. So I'm going to attempt to do two damage to your Iron Rhino. Oh, yeah, you got it. Rhino out. Crunch. Crunch, crunch. Okay. Fine, fine. Fine. I'm just here, so I don't get fine. Uh, over to you. Hmm. What what kind of life do you gain if I destroy this monk? One one heal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, well, this seems logical, but I can get more value. <laughs> You know what I mean? The value. You just got to go for the value at every turn, don't you? Don't you? Okay. Uh, let's exhaust here to exhaust here for the turn. Mm -hmm. Holy Knight swings for four. Yeah, you got it. And I exhaust, and then into the, after that round, it turns out where you get unexhausted. Okay. Okay, so... Jeremy says, the circus of value. Um, I might, I might have to, oh, I guess it's fine. Um, oh, I blocked, that's why I was turned. It's like, why did I turn him? <laughs> Uh, let's go Butterfell Monk on uh, Mirror Spirit there.
All right. Uh, I will not counter. All right. Take one. Side action for one. Be gone. All right. Uh, let's let's go ahead with this holy night. Uh, some experience. Be, yeah. uh, seek a little bit of enlightenment. Hmm. On exhaust. No. Uh oh. Um. I'll pass. Swing for four. All right, we're calling to action. Remove an exhaustion after you attack. Nice. On the monk. Block with the monk. You got it. Heal one. So taking four, heal one. That's much better. Oof. Uh, over to me, nothing. Chaos gravity. Going to place an exhaustion token on a unit. Ooh. I could move an exhaustion token from a unit to a tar another target unit that a player controls, and then I can remove an exhaustion token from a unit. Very nice. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, pass. Going for four. You got me. Into the round? Into the round. Discard one. Don't even need to see the dice. Yeah, you just know. So I basically, in case to go back to that moment where you're making a choice, I would have definitely blocked the Rhino with Echo. Mm -hmm. But then my play at that point was uh, Chaos Gravity lets me focus the Rhino down again. Yeah, that would have been way better for me. Yeah. But <laughs> to have I, seven damage on you right now. I had... <laughs> I had... <laughs> enough unfocus that like because I ended up spending dice to destroy your rhino mm -hmm. so it would have given me another unfocus even beyond what I did so it's different math uh, like, it's not even close I, I, I think it works out because <laughs> like because I have the unfocus as well on the defense mm -hmm. so like it's so good anyway yeah that Holy Knight would be intargetable is a real pain. Yeah. Sure is. Uh, okay. Well. You're at seven Dear, dear four or whatever? Five? Eight? It's four. Yeah, sure. I you. you got it. And then I'll side action here. I'll spend a music note and get a little more gravity. Putting back. on the jams. Okay, let's see what we got here. We have maybe one of those. Uh, maybe one of these guys. You know, yeah, you're just going to look at it. Maybe one of these. I don't know. Maybe one of those guys. Maybe a couple of these here. Maybe one of these. So we definitely want to save those. But to make a choice. Mm. Mm, 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 ah. All right. Let's let's get a rhino party. Might expect. And then let's uh, side action to make it a bigger rhino. A giant rhino. Now I have a better plan. <laughs> I was looking for that rhino. I was like, whoa. It's hilarious. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, is it mine? Yeah. Play a jungle warrior. For an action, music note, basic. Um, here, and then I'll meditate. Go these up to horses. What's that thing do? Uh, two attack, two life, one recover. When it goes away, I gotta put a status token on something, and also when it's destroyed, I can unexhaust uh, or remove. Sorry, I want exhaustion from a target unit. 
Okay, it goes away. You remove from Holy Knight, basically. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. You have three left. Mm-hmm. And un units can always block for Phoenix Born. Yep. Or guard. They can I always say. block. They can't always guard okay. for units. Okay. So, uh, swing into said Holy Knight. You probably take seven. That seems normal. Hmm. What is this card? It should be. I grab a gravity train, not a. Oh, it's a. It's one of the buffs. Yeah. So it's a five. Five five. Five five. Can't touch this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And it can't just cannot be targeted straight up. It can right now. Hmm. It's blank. Oh, I always forget that ability. Yep. Yeah. That's important. Sure can. All right, let's uh, play close combat there. Uh, unexhausted unit is going to deal seven to Boot Holy Knight. And you don't take any back? I take one or an exhaustion, but I'll just take a wound. That seems pretty right. Yeah, that card's bonkers in this deck. All right. I'll, I can't believe I missed it. I'm going to react. Oh, no. I'm going to play Shatter Pulse. So two music notes and a basic. Play a spell after a unit I control is destroyed. Destroy a target unit. I may change two dice in a target player's pool besides my choice. So I'll destroy there. Okay. And then... I wish my things couldn't be targeted. Yeah. And then I will go ahead and just turn these down to basics. Okay. Um, and then it's my turn, so I will... Think about my life carefully. Mm -hmm. Uh, huh. I will. <laughs> Sorry, Seven. that's hilarious. One of these things. You have one exhausted unit, so it will come in with one attack. And then I will meditate one into a lion. And. Meditate one more into the line. All know. right. Uh, let's meditate two up. Seems good. Yeah, there's a rhino. <laughs> there it was. Didn't need those memories. Uh, these guys are going up, and then butterfly monks coming out. All right, let's see what shenanigans you've got. I'm going to side action. There's three dice shenanigan. To exhaust that. Okay. And then <laughs> I'm going to swing. I got nothing. All right, great. Yeah. <laughs> the the four die rhino is obviously having a first five that doesn't work is not ideal. Yeah, but it's not a great start. The four die rhino is so much better later on. Yeah, but you can't. I, I I just don't think you can open memories into it. That's that's. Is it like too much of a tempo swing? It's so. I mean, it's so much. I'll tr I can try it. I'll try doing it again, and just get the four die rhino and see if that changes anything. Actually, go for it. Yeah, but like, the di there's it's just so much dice, and it's so controllable. I mean, there's a thousand different ways you just kill something because this is a game that doesn't have an upper limit on destruction. So big units are naturally bad, as we know in yeah, all games. Destroy right? or exhaust doesn't it doesn't say a yeah, unit that costs X magic. Or yeah, less or seven whatever. or six or higher or something. Or so that's a higher, that's yeah. a problem. Um, so the bigger units are just naturally going to be worse, unfortunately. So if anything, maybe it's just 
you got you have to veil really tremendously. But then, you know, you're getting into some weird stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's the the problem with the Rhino generically is that, like, it costs so much. And then, like, there's so many ways for it to be stopped. Yeah. A thousand. Like, just every deck has an option to deal with it. And One, if they deal with it, they're usually also dealing with it for less cost than it took you to get it into play. Almost always. But it's a dream. Don't you see? It's a dream. It is but a dream. I'm trying to think of what would make it actually better. Is it is it something about this is where usually you can go sideways and like it's not it's kind of the rhino, but it's not really the rhino. So you just put other big units in? I think I mean, so you don't like Holy Knight could do it. Anything that can't be targeted by stuff can be built. Uh but there's only so many of those, are there? You're also like, I think it's only Holy Knight that does that. Uh, you're also not really building the Rhino, right? No, nah, not really. I mean, you have the ice thing, but like, it's not like you're like stacking a bunch of stuff up on mm -hmm. a unit. The reality of the Rhino is he's such a threat that he is the thing. Is there anything else that like cancels effects that target things aside from Golden Veil? That's a good question. That's a great question, right? See if any of those I mean, that's there. where. Uh, actually, hold on. That's where that weird card that I liked, but then didn't didn't use Confusion might spores. be good. No, um, it's here. It was the side action, and for the turn, you can't mess with it mm. until the start of the next turn. Safeguard. Mm -hmm. Prevent all damage dealt by an opponent's attack, spell, ability, or dice power. That prevents the damage, which is kind of good, but the destroy a unit effects, it does not prevent. Yeah, just this generic destroy. Which is what, like Shatter Pulse and um, even some of the stuff I had. Uh, Rin's Fury destroys. How does, Gold, how does Golden Veil read? Uh, after you're targeted with a spell ability or dice power, cancel the effect, hmm. essentially. So if there was anything else that did that, that would be worth looking at. Because I feel like your... But kind of the idea is you probably don't want that in the game. What's the thing it gives a, and two units each other's attack? Exhortation. So like that, to me, is your way around exhaustion, very clearly. Because like even if I exhaust the Rhino, being able to pass his strength off to something random mm -hmm. is pretty good. Um, do you have any unexhaust in there? Yeah, there's some in okay. here. And but then... It, it, it's really just, what was the card where if you take damage, is Shatter Pulse when you take damage or when you lose a unit? Shatter Pulse is when I lose a unit. Okay. And then Sympathy Pain is when you take damage and it does damage? Sympathy Pain is when I take damage, but it only does two. It only mattered because you took four on the right, right now from right, right. the little exchange okay. that we did. So really the biggest issue there was going to be uh, Shatter Pulse. Anything that destroys yeah. a unit outright. Now, that the other part of that is that you... In some ways, we're a little greedy with that decision. Because, like, you wanted to be able to clear my big unit and still have your Rhino to use the next action. Mm -hmm. But if you had actually just attacked at my unit, because mm -hmm. you took the damage from me anyway, but you spent a card and dice to do that, if that makes sense. Yeah, so uh, you have to be unexhausted to use close combat. Yeah. So if I'd swung with the Rhino, close combat is dead. So most of the time, just swinging with the Rhino instead of playing close combat in that situation is going to be worse, depending on what you have in your hand. Like, swinging at the Holy Knight, I think there's a lot more ways where attacking goes bad than when mm -hmm. direct damage to a unit through an ability goes bad. Gotcha. Like, you could unexhaust it. If you have the, the card that call to action that unexhausts, then now you're countering and killing me. If you have, like, whenever your opponent attacks you, something happens, which is, like, a lot of cards. Yeah. But did, didn't that... What <clears throat> made me do damage to you? On an exchange. Like, you did played a card where we did damage to each other? The... Oh, yeah, the... Um... That, was, that was the card that you played that turn. What was it? Uh, it's the Seeds of Aggression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if you're going to take my damage anyway, it's like, at least attacking gets you the overkill. And if I have a Destroy Your yeah. Card card... Because that's what it was. You you took the four mm -hmm. and destroyed my thing, so then I could tee up the two damage to just murder you. 
Yeah, because then, you know, the best play there is kill this thing for four and then tromp through this thing for two damage to you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that would be really good. But I felt like I was so behind that I needed something to go... <laughs> to go really right. Really yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, because I know that that, that kind of opened the door for me to take advantage of that turn. Because mm -hmm. it was like, oh, yeah, you killed this unit, but now I can kill your Rhino really easy. I didn't have a great answer outside of that. Okay. Well, I'm going to switch up a couple of these yep. cards. Uh, and it's Take going... Uh, close combat is definitely coming in. Safeguard is maybe coming in. Close guard is super good. That close combat, yeah, that's ideal. Yeah, that's amazing. This is this is way better than the uh, seeds of aggression. Is it a replacement though? I don't I don't know about that. Because is seed, does seeds make you be unexhausted to do it? No, seeds you can do anytime. So I think that is why they're both playable. Yeah. But if you play in seeds, I would almost rather play it after I've attacked. Yes. And now I'm just clearing out my exhausted Rhino to play another Rhino, honestly. Y you do want to do that. Although, <laughs> playing another Rhino is not possible with the 5 die Rhino. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which maybe it should be the 5 die Rhino, and you just live with that. Because I, I don't think there's actually a world where you open memories into the... That's three dice to get three that. Three dice and three cards. You can't. I mean, it's a We can't do cast. that. We can't yeah. do that. We can't do that. Um, so we just need to make a five die rhino matter. I, I like the five die, and then just assuming that once around you're going to do it. You're just going to go for the five. One, like, just go. Yeah. <laughs> and just having cards to make me pay for it, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah. I can deal with you, but you're just going to get value out of it first. Just make it annoying, and then if you try to deal with it, and it goes, and like the block card is there, the golden veil is there, then it's like, oh, well, now yeah. it's over. Literally, when I said I'm going to try to do this, if you had the block card, that turn I killed the rhino with a two damage, mm -hmm. it's just, I have nothing. Yeah, the golden veil. You, you're just kind of, <laughs> literally, it's like, well, I hope we, and, you know, it's like, I just hope he doesn't have it. Um, yeah, you got to hope. But that's where, like, between that and maybe the decision when you, you could have attacked and I would have blocked for the echo, I don't know if blocking with echo is the right call or not at that point. Mm -hmm. Um... I didn't block, you didn't attack, but I feel like there are a couple decision points too that it reminds me of Flesh and Blood where just using the tools you did have in a different stack could have been a total... The Rhino's so swingy, but like the wrong decisions is zero damage. Yeah. But the right decisions is like you're ahead by 20. Well, but wrong and right isn't, isn't discernible. Yeah. So you kind of have to roll the dice in a hopeful way. And you know how much I love rolling dice. Okay, open memories is out. Uh, yeah. Third close combat but is in. But that's where, like, the rhino is so funny. It's so in your face, aggressive. And, mm -hmm. like, it's basically either you answer this and I lose or you don't answer this and I win. Yeah. Like that old, uh, there were some old spoils decks that were pretty degenerate like that. Yeah. Which I did not like. You just put your foot <laughs> on the gas and, well, let's see. Let's see if they can do it. Okay, in terms of rhino protection. Safeguard is actually pretty cool as a side action. I like that card a lot. One basic. It can it can make you get to the next turn with the Rhino, which is oftentimes just what you need. So you can like safeguard, attack, next turn, or next turn, like uh, Seeds of Aggression, yeah. or safeguard, Seeds of Aggression, next safeguard, turn. Safeguard, Seeds of Aggression is amazing. That's actually incredible. <laughs> Here we are. We just found it. Yeah. We just found it. Uh, so those are really good together. Um, I think Rin's Fury is really good. Yeah. Uh, dealt damage by units attack prevent it and destroy the attacking unit. So it looks like there, I, I had one of these in hand and I thought, oh, he's going to attack that unit. That's when the sympathy pain happened. Mm. So it's like, he's going to get cheeky and be like, I can kill that rhino and then I was going to rinse for you. Yeah, I just uh, out magic you Close. Like, accidentally. <laughs> Close combat necessary. Uh, call to action I think is good. Unexhaust whenever you yeah, that, launch that, an attack. That's what won you the game last time. Yeah, golden veil necessary. Um, then we've got, we've got some allies. Um, the Raptor Herder is not doing anything for me. Yeah, I don't feel like I need that. Flute Mage is an unexhaust side action, so you can put it on the board. It's a fine body. But it's a body, right? Yeah, I think that's fine. So I think Raptor Herder goes out. He gone. And I think this, because at that point, what's my, your what's your first five here? Well, so we're gonna do Resonance Rhino, yeah. and I think Butterfly Monk as my kind of unit spread. And what does that cost you on the dice side of things? So that's going to be uh, one to play the Rhino, essentially one to play the Residence, two, and then a free action there. 
So I've got two on the first three cards. Now, if I play the monk, that's three. If I play the rhino, then we're at eight. So you still have two resources. You still have two resources. And two cards. So you could play a something to put on your spell board that you don't use any resources on. Mm -hmm. You could also play a two-cost ally just to have a body yeah. that is decent on And turn there's one. some good two-cost allies out there. Like the that world. iron worker, man. I'm telling you. Is he the iron worker? If you don't deal with the iron worker, they get a bunch of cards. It's real annoying. Maybe it is the iron worker. I feel like a... Uh... Miss Spirit's Illusion, it's almost like you need a Conjuration that can put out a few things. Mm -hmm. If that were even possible. Is that um, where the Raptor Herder was feminine? Yeah, but that's an ally. So, like, if I had one, I could just play out. Because mm -hmm. I just, like I was, spell? I had a body problem. <laughs> like, so many. I've been saying it for years. <laughs> so many uh, of my, my insecurities. Um, and you've got these in the stack, right? Yeah, in your uh, Conjuration stack. What do you think about Echo? Echo's crazy. The ability to exhaust a unit, for even just for the turn, lets you... My general idea here was, like, play good allies. <laughs> and, and essentially, if you have a bunch of good units around, then you're going to be able to sneak damage by occasionally. And uh, then play the wonkiest reactions you can play with these dice types. I like and it's pretty, Some of these cards are really powerful. Like, Shatter Pulse is crazy if they have big units. I had Crescendo in my hand at the end. That that card can be insane. If I can exhaust a unit with his ability, swing with two, three attack units, play Crescendo, do one to me, do three to one of your units, I can basically mm. clear the way for two units really easily. It's scary. Um, and it doesn't take much. He's very flexible, and Chaos Gravity is absurd. Put an exhaustion, move an exhaustion from one of one unit to a unit, and then also remove an exhaustion. You could, I could literally have two, like my Holy Knight and my uh, Swordsman, and my sh whatever spirit. And it's like, I exhaust one of your units, I move from one of my threes to here, and I remove the other one from here. Yeah. Like, you just totally change the board state. That's uh, that's a incredibly good card. Yeah. It's <laughs> insane. It's so good. Every, every card I drew when I was playing this, I was just like, yeah, that's really absurd. Yeah, maybe I start running these birds. Bird is the word. When it's destroyed, place an exhaustion on a target unit. That's pretty good. Sometimes. Sometimes. I just, it, I feel like there was a conjuration that brought multiple things. Wasn't there like a panther spirit situation? Yeah, there's the ally, though. Mm. Uh, Vampire Bat Swarm is close. It's not on my, uh, it's not on my yeah, dice, does, unfortunately. Yeah. There's also the Horde. I'm in Brennan. Brennan runs. She runs a lot of that. Is that like the ancestor stuff where it can bring other ancestors in? Let me find it. It's the uh, Rising Horde. You're not playing Ceremony, so it doesn't matter. I can always put one die in. It's, it's two. No. Uh, but when it's destroyed, you get two Fallen Conjurations. So it's a one unit, and then if it's destroyed, you get two more units because mm -hmm. it's got mm -hmm. some bones. And in the deck where I destroy my own units a lot, you can imagine that's very powerful. <laughs> it's very powerful. Powerful, yeah. Okay, the owl. Maybe I just run the owl. Ooh. Just kidding. I don't care. And the ice golem. I mean, ice golem's good. Obviously, it's great in Rin. You are playing ice, ice man. Let me see the ice golem. It's actually pretty. Pretty good little idea there. Wow. So his little attachment he puts on makes it a four life? Mm hmm. Technically five, because it also gets one from the attachment. You know, it's hard to, hard to resist. Really, maybe even just one more unit on the spell board to start. So basically, Rhino Resonance, Butterfly Monk, unit of some kind. Cheap unit. I, I like that you went from this ally talk to like an literally ally. an entire spell board. The last thing is an ally. <laughs> or maybe you do just run the allies. Maybe I'll follow the advice here. I mean, part of it is you're going to pay like six or seven. How much are you paying to get the rhino out, Five. ultimately? Five plus the two to get the spells in. Uh -huh. So you're using seven of your first turn to get a rhino on the board. Mm -hmm. Eight becomes the monk. 
And then you're basically looking at probably nine is like a veil, and then ten is like an ally. Yeah. And so then you 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 have maybe the two dice on the ally, and then you can choose between veil or ally depending on which one you need. Could be reasonable. Yeah. What's the uh, that Panther Master? How much does that cost? Panther Master. <laughs> The spirit of Panther. Let's just look at. I'll just look at these allies again. That's what we're here for. Okay, status tokens don't care. Essence Druid is amazing. The um, art every time makes me interested. But it, it's illusion, right? I I never get to play illusion. Yeah, it is uh, my final frontier. That essence Druid? No, it's, it's not. Just, it's horse horse heart basic. Can I see those cards? Yeah. It's not going to work for this deck, but I'm interested in the... Uh... You know, when it comes in, it puts a spell in your discard pile into your hand. I wonder if I can get an Iron Rhino into the discard pile first turn somehow. Meditate a whole lot. Yeah, just constant <laughs> until you find it. That's actually super funny and very degenerate. If you run two in your deck, your odds of meditating into it is pretty high. Yeah, that's true. Okay. God, that card's so good. Okay. String Mage, not a bad idea. Yeah, that card. The That combination, blue and pink, is something I have never even come close to running. But it's really one, good. One day I will. Uh, uh, Beast Tamers, get, see, all these allies are incredible. Yep. This, these allies are incredible, man. Uh, Grave Knight. So there's an Ancestor something in here. Ancestor Spirit? That I remember seeing. Yeah. And then you start learning all the different dice types, and it's like, ah, oh, you get access to this thing. Yeah. And that thing. Like, one thing that would be really helpful for me, and I'm, I, the, I need a deck builder, honestly. But, like, just looking at any die you can play out of, like, Charm, mm -hmm. and going through and making note of any notable card in that class, and doing that for everyone. It's a good idea. But then also like every combination of two and just really identifying what that bridge looks like. Like here's the card you get for going ceremonial charm as an example. That understanding I feel like would be revolutionary for me. I'm just not there. I can't grab that much, there but yet, I'm either. getting there. Uh, there's the bear. I think it's the bear. I don't know. I mean, it's the bear, the beast tamer. I didn't see anything that I was like I was looking for in this, this bag of stack, unfortunately. The ancestor something or other. He's not in one of these decks, is he? What are you it's like for? whenever it Oh no, wait, I think it's a I think it's a signature. I think it's for me a signature. Yeah. Yeah. I can it's verify a signature. And I, yeah, that's about it. And then eventually you probably just switch to Majestic Titan. You know what I mean? I do. For me, it has the Ancestral Army. When it comes to play, you get two Ancestor Spirits. That's it, yeah. Okay, that's what I was thinking of. But I thought there was another way. You know what? I think there's a way to get Ancestor Spirits with a, a, a discard spell. Oh, that does seem right. I do remember that, yeah. We do the Mind Fog Owl. Which is pretty good. Always good. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, here's the ancestor spirit. I don't know. If people got quiet or my chat died. <laughs> Using Discord makes me nervous. Yeah, hold on. We, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be on the other one. It used to not make me as nervous. Maybe it's just these ancestor spirits. You know what? I'm actually gonna go there. You're going to summon Ancestor Spirits. Yeah. Um, only because I really think that's uh, that's going to be the best choice for this deck. Because Thanks, Red Tyrant. When it comes this in, guy go? That guy goes over here. I'll get him. When it uh, comes into play, you draw a card, and then you uh, place a card from your hand on the bottom of your draw pile. So it can draw you into so many of these tools that you're looking for to make a turn really good. Mm -hmm. I think Ancestor Spirits is the right answer. Um, so I'm going against my own uh, desires, and then as a, I still get a two die ally. It can be a Frostfang, three one, with one armor. 
That's a nice threat. It could be a sleeping bear that does nothing, but it still works with cards like uh, Seeds of Aggression, which is really good. Or it can be the old Beast Tamer, which is fascinating. Reduce the value of all attacks, uh, everything attacking by one when it's blocking, and then you don't exhaust to counter, and it's a 2-3-1. Huh. That's got some staying power. That's got a lot of staying power. Yeah. If they're minus one, and wait, it's minus one, everything's minus one when they're attacking, right? Yeah. While it's in a battle, the attack value of units in battle is reduced by one. That seems really good with the Rhino, even. Yeah. Because like you can swim with both Rhino still at six. Yeah. But anything that could otherwise defeat him. I happen. think that's it. I think that's it. Let's do a beast tamer. All along, you just needed a beast tamer for your Iron Rhino. For my own Rhino. It's just, it builds itself. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Okay. So that's in there. So this would be the first one. So it'll be Leaf, one for Resonance. Uh, I'll just play a Butterfly Monk. You're not paying it? Not yet. Beast Tamer is going to be these two. Ancestor Spirit here. Then we can do Ancestor Spirit, Butterfly Monk. And then we have four dice that we can't spend. So really, we probably don't do Ancestor Spirit and do Rhino on first turn, yeah. or we don't do Butterfly Monk and we do Ancestor Spirit. Just depending on... Depending on what, what's going on. What they feed you. It's out there in the world. Yeah. All right, I'm willing to give it a shot. Interesting. I think that's it. That's it. So what a fascinating little change. Huh. And I even have one slot. Where? I'm going to do one cover. Here it is. Uh, you done with these? And call it a day. Yeah, I'm done with those. Huh. Well, what an interesting little deck. It didn't end up how we thought it would end up. I'm just going to cut that flute mage and put another cover in here. All right, so there we go. I think all of the tools are there. You're you're basically safeguard. I think is going to be a really important include here. Yeah. Uh, safeguard into seeds of aggression is incredible. Amazing. So safeguard is good generically with you. So you can do it to protect yourself for a turn or to play it and just attack and not run the risk of. And that's so good all the time. With seeds of aggression, it's amazing. Insane yeah. turn. Yeah, that's but so good. Even the reality of like play um, safeguard. Swing is pretty amazing. Yeah, safeguard swing is awesome. Yeah. And then it keeps you safe for the next, the next, all the way to your next turn, yeah. which is so On your good. opponent's turn. They can't just attack you down. Yeah. And they can't even, they can't even like do damage with weird spells. Like even Sympathy mm -hmm. Pain doesn't work. That's a really good spell. I'm in love with that. Uh, Flute Mage, of course, for the uh, Unexhaust. Triple Exhortation because that's yeah. a surprise win condition. Going with two covers. What does that do again? After your Phoenix form guards something, prevent all the damage, and do one back to the mm. unit. I figure there'll be some times when that matters. Golden Veil necessary. Close combat. The spell for this deck. And call to action for a surprise unexhaust. Yeah, the surprise unexhaust is going to get... But you got me last time with that. Yep. And I'm always nervous about it now. Yeah, you got to be nervous constantly. Um... And then uh, Jeremy's saying Beast Tamer only reduces the attack value of units in battle with it. So that would mean like if both Rhino and Beast Tamer are attacking, whatever blocks Beast Tamer uh, would get the minus one. Oh. So that's fair. I think it's still a pretty good little ally. So it's really good at blocking. Yeah, it's a great blocker. Because it doesn't, it takes one less damage. Yep. It's a great blocker. And it doesn't exhaust a block. And I feel like that might be the main thing that I'm trying to do, is just keep you from attacking me whenever the rhino dies. Yeah. And then bring it back. That makes sense. Did it. Done. All right. Any echo changes? Uh, not. I don't, I, I don't have enough. I need more to understand what I'm changing. It felt fine, but I also made some mistakes, I felt like, throughout the game. Do you want to see how fast we can play a game? I'm into it. All right. Let's see how fast we can play a game. It's like that. I think we did a crisis protocol, but it said playing fast, and it still takes two and a half hours. Yeah, I know, right? We tried. That's not really a game you can play fast. I feel like this is a game you can absolutely play fast. How many bases you got? Uh, one, two, three, four. Back belly, back belly. I got three. So you get choice. All right. I will go... S 
I'll go first. Let's see what happens. I can I can see doing either. Yeah, I don't don't really know. All right, these are all shuffled. All right, let's see what we can do. Um, first thing we're gonna do: summon an iron rhino. Yep. And then we're gonna meditate some things up. We're gonna meditate one. Ouch. Uh, two. So one. Take that to a horse. Two. Take this to a snake. And then that'll be it. That's okay. all I need. I'm gonna play summon mist spirit, and then we will meditate three into a horse, a lion, a lion. Let's see if I can keep that speed going here. The need for speed. All right, let's play Resonance as a side action. It's going to be two dice here and a basic. And we're going to bring one back, two back, three back, four back. Okay, that's now focused. And then, well, welcome to Threatsville. Rhino time. You know what I mean? What time is it? Rhino time. Rhino time. I'm into it. Let's go ahead and uh, just do it. It's a scary thing to do. It's so scary every time. Yeah. It's so scary. I mean, I think the the thing that would make it less scary is fundamentally understanding how I can mess with you. Yeah. Right? So, like, I could exhaust you. There's plenty of cards that can do that. I can't just do four damage randomly or destroy you without you doing something first. Yeah. As far as I know. Good I, to I don't know. have access to just like get rid of your unit. <laughs> Sorry about you. Um, all right. I will declare bankruptcy. Just kidding. Um, we'll go uh, bring in the mirror spirit. Mm -hmm. And then pass to you. Okay. Let's play the old Summon Ancestor Spirit. Okay. Let's play Gravity Train. Okay. All right. I like this too because it threatens the Golden Veil. Is it holding the Beast Tamer? Oh, yeah. It's really good. I'm sitting there looking at that snake. Yeah. Trying to act like I don't know that it's not there. Um... Yeah, uh, I think it's smart to swing through. Take two, block, block. Maybe not. I'm going to play a Butterfly Monk Summon. I'll tell you what, if you want to talk about being aggressive, you could technically start with that uh, side action can't take damage. Mm -hmm. And even the Seeds of Aggression. And it's like, even right here, if you played the I can't do damage to you, mm -hmm. and you swung at me, that would be very annoying. You block with a mirror spear, right? Yes. And then it goes back to my turn, and then you have a turn to, to, to do, do it again. It. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think I seeds a mirror spirit. The little blockers. This is where like Aridel was really strong. Oh, I need a side action here. To... You just pop my. Mm -hmm. They're strong. all strong in their own ways. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Okay. Okay. Think about this. So it's kind of interesting because if I stay without another unit, you can't attack a different unit. Mm -hmm. But if I put another unit out because I don't have a unit guard, what a crazy awesome change. Um, then, like, the reality is if I want to protect that unit, I have to block with Echo. Yeah. And I don't want to block. You don't want to block seven with seven Echo? Seven ever at any point. To the face? But I also can't just pass. Hmm. Rhino threats ahoy. Yeah. Thousand we're, chips delicious. We're in the end game now. Um, 
Well, I just gotta let you take the take it. Take the chance, you know. Do your dance. Um It's the space gym. Alright. All right. Let's play Holy Night. Oh holy night. Um I love that holy night, dude. Every day, all day. Every day, all day. Uh, no matter what, we're rolling through it. So let's attack the holy night. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and strange copy. Okay. I'm going to become a copy of the rhino. Okay. Rhino on rhino, take two. Yeah. I think that's my my answer to that moment. Um, all right, then I will play Sonic Swordsman, Lion, Music Note, and a basic here. Beast Hammer in. You have a horse left. One horse. A horse can get you an ancestor spirit. You can get me a yeah, an ancestor spirit. Mm -hmm. Too bad I didn't have the rhino back there in the art. All right. Great skirt though. <laughs> Very impressive skirt. <laughs> Beautiful colors. They're on the next level with the color of this game. It's so good. I may Andrew Cartwright, uh, I, I'm not following System Core very much with Nisei, um, but I've been here a lot. Of noise, all the rumblings I, are good. Yeah, I'm glad that it's working out. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna exhaust your beast tamer, mm -hmm. swing at you for three. You got me. I my choice there is to do that or just take out the beast tamer because you can't strike back. You can block either way, I guess. Well, me blocking here, you only do two to me. If you're exhausted, that's not true. That's true. That is very true. <laughs> this, that rule of poking its head Yay. out again. But uh, you could block with Ren, uh, Ren either way. Um. Well, uh, swing for two on Echo. Block. Yeah. Uh, I will spend this and make my swordsman slightly more of a swordsman. Okay. That's the Ancestor Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then it comes into play. You may draw a card if you do place one card from here on the bottom. So I can draw one and put one on the bottom? I don't think so. Don't, it's don't the matter. same idea either way. Yeah. You're acting. Two to you. Uh, that echo. Feels better? Yeah, it's better. Next round. Shuffle and cut. Shuffle and cut it. Now you go first. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's think about this. What an interesting hand. That rhino sure takes a lot of dice. <laughs> Yep, sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, that's a crazy card. Don't you hit me with that gravity belt or whatever it is. <laughs> Chaos gravity? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. Gravity belt. You gotta play fast. Remember, we gotta put the afterburners on. I'm, if I think now, I'll play fast later. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, bam, 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 bam. That seems fine. Uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, I'm going to swing at you with a Sonic Swordsman. Why would you do that? Uh, but I have things first. A reaction to declaring attackers? Yeah. I'm going to crescendo. Oh. Discard a card. Uh, do a damage to me. Do three damage to a unit. Hmm. Can't do anything about that. Three of the tamer. You got me. Um, I 
Oh, sorry. Before I do any of this, I'm exhausting here to exhaust that. Okay. Because I don't want to just get chump blocked by that thing <laughs> for no reason. Uh, yeah, so swing and I. All right, I take four. Take four, call me in the morning. Got to use that tempo. Tempo. And then Birthday. Cake. All right. Well, um, things that we need right now. We're going to rhino up. Go with the one that brought you. Uh, he's so beefy. And we're not going to hit the ice buff yet. We're going to side action some things up. Um, we definitely need one of these. So I'll do one here. One here. I gotta, I'll do this first, then I'll pay for the rhino. Yeah, so I can see it. Um, another one here. And now we can do the rhino. So let's do one, two, three, four, five. Seems to make a lot of sense to me. Um, except I'm gonna throw one here. So I can get a late, late game uh, ancestor spirit if I need to, and I'll go ahead and pump that one up. Since we're in the mood to meditate. Over to you. Okay. Let's uh, summon my spirit here, and we'll side action meditate. Force. Meditate to a horse. Now, what in the world? Double double action on the horse. So, yeah, I'm going to take this while I can. I'm going to do... Yep. This is life one or less. Oof. I thought it was attack. Just that stupid zero, too, man. It even made me play Aerodel again. <laughs> like, what? Oh, man. This guy's crazy. Why? Ah. <clears throat> okay. All right. I, I can get into this. Uh. Let's think for a second, because we're supposed to play fast, right? Real fast. Super fast. All right. Side action, exhortation here. One and one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So nine and nine. And they're both going to swing at echo. Well, there's that. Oh, you, you can get one in the Mirror Spirit. Because this has an exhaustion. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. We'll take that. Um, yeah, OK. Not that That's much right. matter. That's right. So he just gets his attack, but not his overkill. That's right. If I'm going to block something, I should block that thing. Yeah, and you can counter it. Check, and I kill it. The one attack makes that a bit worse. Yeah. If that's the case, hold on. That one attack matters a lot. Okay. Don't think about that exhortation. I, it's out of my mind. <laughs> We're going to ice buff here and swing at the mirror spirit with a 2-2. Two -two. Hmm. Leave the rhino up up top. What's your nineteen? You got so much health. <laughs> I mean, it's probably. Let's not. Let's just go with the original play. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. Yeah. Just keep it as it is. Play the ball where it lands. 
Yeah, Axirador. <laughs> My math. It still has to be nine damage no matter which way you slice it, right? I don't know what you're capable of. It's, but I'm going to take nine. Going to 13 damage seems like don't something you, you should not doubt it. mess up. Um, working on a grip. This game also goes deeper than you expect. Every time. Every, every time. You're supposed to be playing fast. I was. You took forever to figure this out. I did out. fast decisions. I just I, kept taking them back. I get 30 seconds for a decision. Fast decision, take it back to let's fast Let's do a chess clock. 10-minute <laughs> chess clock each for a game. I'll do, ch I'll do chess clock. Uh, let's block the Ancestor Spirit. Mm -hmm. Done. Yeah. Battle here first. Take, take nine. nine. And then battle here, two and one back. Mm -hmm. Any shenanigans? No shenanigans. Okay. All right. Oh, I will shenanigan. I'm going to sympathy pain. Uh, a horse and do two damage to your Phoenix one. Come on. Okay. Just a little poke. Pink poke. Sympathy. The power of sympathy. Uh, my Heart. turn. I'm going to exhaust here, spend a music note. Our swordsman's going to get a little more swordsy. Got those sonic fists. Uh, then my action will be chaos gravity. I'm going to do a bunch of stuff. Exhaustion here, removing exhaustion here. Your turn. Oh, uh, really? Yep. Double exhaustion there? You already had an exhaustion. What? What have I done? <laughs> uh, I'm not taking five. I can tell you that. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, I have to pay for that. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. Seeds of aggression. These two will do damage to each other. No! But I gotta figure out if there's a secret way to pay for this. I'm gonna pay for it with a froggy. No, not a froggy. I can't use the froggy. With the horsey. We destroy each other. Yeah, we do. Thank Aaron, your favor. <laughs> um, oh, no, not the horsey. I need the ancestor spirit. The frog or the snaky. Let's meditate here. Meditate again here. Okay. Just put that right oh, on. Uh, summon Ancestor Spirit. And then uh, I will go ahead and side action the plus two on him. Yeah. All right. I'm going to side action. Let's draw a card. Ooh. Not better. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, now um, I got to do this thing. Comes into play. Draw a card. Place one on the bottom. And then I'll put this on the bottom. Uh, yeah. That works. Get down with your bad Back self. Back to me? Mm-hmm. Ooh, I get it all by myself. Swing for two. Take it. Mm. Mm. Excellent. Uh, summon a butterfly monk. Ouch. Pass. Swing for one. Got it. The blood in the water. Pass. All right. Very bad. Am I going first? Yeah. I'm going to swing for three. Can you do anything about it? Uh, let me see. <laughs> No. no. Okay, good. <laughs> cool, cool, Nothing. cool. Tweaks, yeah. man. Yeah, tweaks. tweaks it's crazy. And so that that last turn I had five dice I couldn't use. You can't, yeah. It's, you fa the failed, that, you failed. That's not good. You were playing like me that first game. You were, you were finding yourself in situations like I found myself the first yeah. game. We're, we're always playing expertly. Yeah, of uh, course. Just the cards sometimes don't work out very well. Yeah. Uh, but th that is a pretty good uh, test case of what we were talking about earlier, uh, kind of the opposite in some ways, which is like part of Conjurations is you always know you can spend your dice. I agree, man. What are these deck builders up to? I'm going to have to go get smoked in a tournament or something yeah. to find out how people are playing. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily right or wrong, but at the same time, I definitely had a weird hand where I just couldn't 
Couldn't play anything. Yeah, it's awful. I had cards I could play, but then I had five dice left over. <laughs> it's too way too cheap, right? It's like, oh, I just have... <laughs> this doesn't work. Yeah. I just realized, too, that um, Ice Buff on the Beast Tamer is extremely good. Four life. Four life and minus one when he's... <sighs> yeah. Bring it on. Super good. Well, uh, hey, another change, another day, another dollar. We, uh, keep diving and diving, and it never ends. It's, it's pretty just, amazing. It's just a, uh, it's just the deep end of the pool is starting to really get get explored here. It's wonderful. Thank you all for being here. Hey, um, Ash's subscriptions continue to tick up. More and more people are are getting on the subscription train, so that's always great to see. We love to see that. Uh, we are hopefully right on the horizon of Reborn happening. The pack's going out to all the subscribers, the upgrade kits. And then after that, uh, it looks like the next release isn't going to be delayed just because the upgrade pack is delayed. Yeah. So hopefully all that's coming in one big container uh, since we all have to like learn about how all this works to play these games at all. Uh, it's coming in the container and then uh, all of that will be here at once. So the first official new release will be here at the same time the Reborn stuff is here. That's our hope. And then there's no delays. So we get a, a Jericho comes pretty quickly yeah. after the Reborn stuff comes in. So hey, thanks for uh, being here, everybody. We'll be here at the same time, same week, same day. We might play some Sky Chair next week. I don't know. Maybe we will. Because they got a new rule set that's yeah. worth exploring. Stay tuned on social for the schedule if yeah. you are interested. Stay safe. Goodbye.